Welcome to the capital city of the state of Florida. A gorgeous evening here above the Capitol Dome where Old Glory flies proudly as it does over fabled Doe Campbell Stadium where this evening two teams from the Atlantic Coast Conference collide. Their records nearly identical, their attitude much different. The Demon Deacons delighted they've won two of their first three. Florida State reeling following last week's shocking setback in Chapel Hill. For Bobby Bowden, and how does he overcome the fact he was beaten by the Tar Heels? Florida For Jim Grove, delighted he's won two of his first three in his first season as the new head man in Winston-Salem. Welcome on Sunshine Network with Keith Jones. I'm Paul Kennedy. So tonight, Florida State returns home and places the nation's longest home field winning streak on the line. The Knowles have won 36 in a row here. Bobby Bowden hasn't lost back-to-back -back games in about a decade. So a lot's at stake. And I think first you have to focus on attitude with this football team. It's only been seven days since Chapel Hill. And a lot of these players, Paul, had never lost an ACC game before, and it's a unique experience for them that they've had to work through. Then a lot of conversation with Coach Bowden and the media, a lot of conversation with assistant coaches, a lot of conversation amongst media people, the reporters, the writers, the media folks that cover FSU. But when we sit down and we talk about it, it doesn't really matter what we say. It's what the kids say and how they respond. And here's what they had to say yesterday. It's hard to walk around knowing that um, you lost, and not only you lost, you lost that badly um, to any team, uh, be it North Carolina, or Miami, or Florida. You never want to lose. You never want to lose that bad. I mean, it's just a serious mode. Um, started Monday in film. I mean, you can hear a pin drop all the way down to yesterday, Thursday. I mean, it's just... It's serious business. Basically, we just didn't play as good as we should have. We, I don't know if we just weren't focused, didn't take it as serious as we should have, but we watched film, we were just making stupid little technique mistakes and stuff like that. And anytime you, you don't play right technique, I mean, anybody's going to make you look bad. we just been going out this whole week, working hard, you know, trying to look in every ball, trying to make every catch. You know, so when it's time to play these big games, you know, we have did it routinely so much in practice. When it comes to game time, it'll just be like practice again. I think the team's done a great job in regrouping, and we had a great week of practice, and everyone's, everyone's behind each other. And know that we, you know, we can't blame that loss on, on any one person or any one uh, you know, specific position group. You know, everyone uh, could have played a lot better, and we know that. So, uh, like I said, we had a good week of practice, and we're ready to come out uh, tomorrow versus Wake and you know, make a statement. Bobby Bowden says our problems did not begin with Chris Ricks at quarterback. He played well enough to win. He really did, and the thing that's unique about Chris, he talks and he acts and he carries himself like a junior or a senior. But we have to remember, this is only his fourth start in college football. Great talent. You see his numbers for the year. And as you mentioned, as we come back to it, the loss not necessarily Chris Ricks' fault. A lot of other people contributed as well. Chris Ricks wears number 16, as did his Heisman Trophy winning predecessor, but uh, certainly the comparison stopped there. He has thrown a touchdown pass in each of the three games this year. Now rejuvenated Wake Forest arrives here. They've won two of their first three and uh, narrowly lost a week ago at the hands of the unbeaten 4-0 Maryland Terrapins. They sport one of the best ground games in the ACC, triggered by junior Terrence Williams. When you talk about Terrence Williams, you're talking about a guy that's a great overachiever. Not terribly big, not terribly fast, just works hard. And as you mentioned, three consecutive 100-yard rushing outings. You see his numbers on the year. Built close to the ground, Paul. He's hard to tackle. He's shifty. Doesn't have biting speed, but plenty of quickness. And he'll test this Florida State run defense. It's number one in the ACC. Yeah. For, for Wake right now, in terms of time of possession, they hold on to the football. They're very effective at eating up time on the clock. So Florida State returning home to Doak Campbell tonight and looking for leaders to once again rediscover the victory column. And with more on that, let's go to the sidelines. The third member of our telecast team, here's Tom Block. Paul, you're exactly right. Last week after Coach Bowden dissected the film from North Carolina, in addition to seeing way too many penalties, way too many turnovers, he saw way too few leaders. So kind of an unprecedented move, at least the last 10 to 12 years. He went ahead and named another captain in the middle of the season. Javon Walker named as an additional co-captain of the offense for Florida State. Walker, a senior receiver, joins Atrus Bell as captains of the offense. Walker is a JUCO transfer. He played baseball with the Florida Marlins for a little bit but hasn't been in Florida State for the entire four years. So he didn't necessarily feel it was his place to take over, but now that he's got the green light from Coach Bowden, he's ready to be one of those leaders. 
But to tell you the truth, I, I wasn't expecting it. You know, um, I'm, I'm thankful Coach Bowden named me a co-captain. Uh, only thing I can do is pretty much do what I did before becoming a co-captain, going out, leading by example. And uh, like I was telling a lot of the guys, you know, I know a lot of guys have been here four or five years, and I didn't think it was my place to try to tell people what to do and stuff like that because I felt like myself personally, I didn't put in the time that a lot of these other guys have put in. But uh, the only thing I can do, you know, just try to lift everybody's spirits and lead by example. We'll see if the addition of Walker helps Florida State in terms of offensive leaders. On defense, he wasn't named a co-captain, but Kendall Pope has been pretty vocal this week about wanting to step up even though he's a sophomore. So perhaps we'll see more leaders all over the place as the teams and the players have kind of reassessed their situation on this team after what happened last week. Paul, Keith. All right, Tom, from Tallahassee, Wake and the Seminoles coming up next. Primetime Knowles Football on Sunshine, brought to you by Checkers. You... Wake Forest in Florida State, it's beginning to feel like autumn here in Tallahassee. A gorgeous evening, bright blue sky, the sun setting, the long shadows as you see. What a raucous day it's been around the world of college football. And now Florida State taking nothing for granted as Wake arrives. This is the most focused you'll ever see Florida State against the ACC, maybe what was considered a lower echelon of the ACC. Coach Bowden talked about during the week, Paul, that the Florida State players had to look at the next two games kind of together. Wake Forest tonight, off week next week, Miami coming up after that, and they can't lose focus by looking ahead, and they can't look back. They've got to play in the present, and uh, I think you heard from the kids in our opening that uh, it has been a great week of practice, and that focus is back. The newest captain is described by Tom Block, Javon Walker, joining his fellow co-captains, Chris Hope included, Chad Mater. Headed out toward the center of the field for the toss of the coin. You saw Chief Wasiola aboard Renegade. The flaming spear already lit. One of the great pregame ceremonies, if not the greatest, in all of college football, set to trigger us into the second home game of the year for Florida State, which won on this field a few weeks ago against UAB, the University of Alabama in Birmingham, a victory over Duke as well, but last week, of course, the Seminoles upset by North Carolina. They stunned a lot of the hate for Chris Licks, but here comes FSU. What a difference a week can make, and certainly North Carolina playing today in Raleigh and beating up on NC State adds credence to the fact that the Tar Heels are better. The entire Atlantic Coast Conference is better than it has been in you. As you mentioned, you've got Maryland sitting atop the ACC, as it were, 4-0. We've got a great game going on with Clemson and Virginia. Uh, as it were, and it's just amazing what's happening in the ACC. You know, Coach Bowden, as you see, Osceola, Chief Renegade. Coach Bowden said during uh, pregame and during the uh, preseason, Paul, that the ACC was going to be much stronger this year. He just didn't know it might mean that Florida State had to lose one in order to make that happen. Awaiting the toss of the coin between our captains. Hope he has a strong right arm. Sure he does. Our referee, Tom Zamorski, has the captains at the center of the field for the toss of the coin. This crew, of course, is signed by the Atlantic Coast Conference and Commissioner John Swafford. So Wake, a solid staff headed by Jim Grobe, a longtime assistant at the Air Force Academy, uh, has a reinstilled confidence in what is a veteran team in Wake Forest. We'll talk about this throughout the evening. Jim Caldwell, dismissed after last year, did not leave the covered bear. He now, of course, is with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. His former team has won the toss, elected to defer until the second half. And now with the Seminole logo at the 50-yard line cleared, a celebration we all treasure. The garnet and gold of Florida State and Bobby Bowden set to face a Wake Forest team that is rejuvenated. And for Bobby Bowden, what a difference a week makes. Are the Knowles ready to play tonight? Well, that has happened in the past. Uh, what will happen this year, I don't know. This is a different ball club. 
this team has to go out and establish their their, their identity. We can't live off what happened last year or the year before or the year before. So how are we going to respond? I don't know. I'm anxious to find out. Bobby Bowden at the age of 71 and, of course, the fourth winningest coach in the history of the game. 317 victories facing uh, Paul Bryant across the field in just his first season at Wake Forest following six at Ohio University. Jim Grobe, his thoughts on arriving in Tallahassee. Oh, I think they're really good. I think they turned the ball over too many times last week, and that got them in trouble. But uh, talking about a very talented football team that really uh, has the combination of speed and, and, and size and power that you look for in, in a football team. So uh, they're, they're very impressive on film. Jim Grove, who said he thought Florida State would have a tough time in Chapel Hill because of North Carolina's veteran defense and the fact Florida State's offense was so young. Said he wasn't surprised that UNC won the ball game. The only shot to him, like the rest of us, was the score. Grafonso Thorpe, Nick Maddox for Florida State. The kicker for Wake is Tyler Asha Sr. We are underway on a gorgeous night for football. The ball kicked toward the sideline, and here comes the Tallahassee native in front, out across the 20-yard line to the 22. A 20-yard return for the man they call Crow, the freshman right here in the panhandle and now the Seminoles on offense to get it underway quarterbacked by Chris Ricks As we take a look at the checkers starting lineups this evening Santa Margarita California Rancho High School I get only his fourth varsity game of his career his numbers so far The throw on first down and throw deep down the sideline and it's batted away incomplete Marcus Magruder on the pass intended for the freshman in P.K. Shen. Now our checkers starting lineup this evening. And a look at Florida State. Maddox and McRae in that backfield. Atrus Bell, Javon Walker. The tight end listed is Carver Donaldson. We see on first down P.K. Sam and a four wide receiver look. And up front the two Williamses. Brett along with Milford Brown, Antoine Marambo, and Montre Holland Todd, of course, the other tackle for Florida State. On the roll. Throwing on the run, and it is cut by Atrus Bell across midfield to the Wake Forest 45-yard line. Obi Chikuma, the free safety. Close lines him down. They pick up 32 for Wake Forest in a 3-4 look. Nate Bowling, Montique Sharp, Calvin Pace. The linebackers, four of them. Ed Corboro Corgi, along with Mike Hamlar, Kellen Brantley, Marquise Hopkins, and the secondary of Williams, Chakuma, Duncan, and Marcus Magruder. Seminoles moving key early. Florida State coming out throwing the ball, and this is what happens and when you make a mistake. Off. Picked off Kellen Brantley from Miami as Florida State worked to set up the screen. The linebacker picks it off and races to the Florida State 30-yard line. Well, unlike last week when Florida State opened up with eight consecutive running plays on their first three series, Florida State in their third play of this series, throwing the ball, just a little overthrown there, trying to get it to McCray right into the arms of Kellen Brantley, and Ricks comes back and pushes him out of bounds for Blake Forrest with great field position as they take over on their first series. Another look on the roll, and he just threw high. Ball, loose ball on the field, fumble, back at the 33-yard line. Here's the quarterback, James McPherson, starts for the first time this season at quarterback. He could not handle the snap from center. He's running back Terrence Williams. Falls on There is McPherson. Anthony Young has started the first three games. We will see McPherson and Wake go about a huddle a great deal this evening. They run the no huddle offense as well as Florida State does. A three receiver set. In motion, John Stone. And have plenty of time on the play clock. 15 seconds there to McPherson to check. Still 10 on the play clock. Again, Stone. Inside to Terrence Williams. 
Jeff Wumble, the nose guard, with this stop. Here is Wake looking at third down offensively. As we set them uh, up front, their backs and receivers. Obi Mahaley is the fullback in front of Williams. And John Stone, very fleet of foot, will also run the ball as he play the wide receiver position. Tyson, play ball, Michael Collins, Chris Angelino, Mike Wooster, and Tim Bennett. Back of the tackle, Howard Chucky is starting on it. Third down and more. And the person shot back at the 41 yard line by Florida State. Busted play. And Florida State's defense has come on and forced the punt here quickly. The lineup. Charles Howard gets the start tonight. Alonzo Jackson on the other side. Doc and Wobble in between. Kendall Pull, Bradley Jennings, Michael Bullware, and a change in the secondary. Sanford Samuels goes to the left side. Rufus Brown will work the left. With Chris Hope, the captain, and Abdul Howard, who made 12 tackles last week in Chapel Hill. McPherson, the quarterback, also punts. He angles this toward the corner. And they narrowly missed downing it inside the five-yard line. Wake probably should have been able to do that. Marcus Magruder was there, got a little too greedy. It bounds into the end zone. Give credit to Stanford Samuels, though. He was one of the bullets, was Magruder, and Stanford Samuels actually knocked him down. That's why he was late getting back there trying to down that, as you mentioned, inside the five. So Florida State from its 20-yard line is the Seminoles huddle. On the sideline before coming onto the field. This might be a very rapidly played game. We might see it at this pace throughout the evening. Well, as we've mentioned, we know that Wake is going to go with the no huddle. Florida State always with the no huddle off for a change of possession, and we expect to see the rifle for a wide no huddle later on in the ballgame. Single setback, uh, spinning ahead, Nick Maddox who is seeking a breakout game tonight, having been corralled by that Tar Heel defense a week ago. Nick, Nick not as successful in his second trip to, to North Carolina as he was in his first. There's his updated season statistics. Very gaudy 5.7 yard average, but only getting the ball about 10 times a game from his tailback position via the rush. Of course, his 30th carry now of the season, so that's a new career high, and this is junior year. Play action to him. Ricks feels the heat. Darts for four, leaves him a yard short. Marquise Hopkins, the senior linebacker on this stop. There is the rugged three-year letterman. Play action. Chris looking to his right, feels the pressure behind him, alertly takes the ball. Watch how he rolls it up and covers it up this time. Gets very near to that first down marker. Wearing that uh, padding there on his left arm. That's the one that he banged the elbow against the turf in the UAB game. Still a little tender for him. Has led the Knowles in rushing, as you see. The last two games and tough running inside for William McRae, the fullback, the senior from Jacksonville, to earn the first down. See big Todd Williams there, number 79, and Willie wearing number 15 this year. Going to work on that left-hand side. Right behind Brown, Mater in there with a little seal block. Unblocked comes in, number 29 for Wake Forest. And Walter Simmons. Walter Simmons and Willie able to bound off of him and get an extra couple of yards. Maddox hit the backfield. Down he goes back at the 29-yard line. Good penetration by Kellen Brantley. Already with an interception. Now the Will linebacker with a tackle for a loss for Miami's Coral Park High School. Brantley and Hopkins, the two interior linebackers in this 3-4, are the most active, and they are number one and two in tackles for Wake Forest. What a lot of teams are doing now, Paul, as Florida State lines up, is they're putting those seven or eight people in the box and daring Florida State to throw the ball. They've loaded the box here, and Chris is going to take him up on it. Throws a one-handed grab made by Carmen Gardner. You bet, you win. Gardner in front of Quentin Williams literally made the catch with those, one hand. And those are the types of catches that this receiver core needs, Paul, in order to regain their confidence and their concentration. Not much of a play-action fake. Didn't need one. A little 
fly route and a nice one-handed grab. That's something that the receivers do two or three times a week in drills. Another look at it right here, just the way Jeff Bowden draws it up. An excellent execution by Chris and Talman. Following the gain of 41, Maddox has a hole. Down to the 20-yard line. The quick feet of Nick Maddox. An eight-yard gain on first down, and Hopkins, the linebacker, on this stop. When McCray checks out. Again, Florida State staying in the eye formation. That's their running formation. Nick, who uncharacteristically fumbled along with several other people last week, covering that ball up and making a nice gain on first down. Second and short, this is what you like. Two tight ends, Maddox, again running road. And he works it to the 10-yard line. That's a first down. Nick Maddox, the ball is here, down here in the early going. A team that has put but one field goal on the board, John, in three previous games in the first quarter is driving toward what looks to be shaping up as a touchdown. Impressive drive going right now. One thing that's very evident, Paul and Keith, down here on the sideline, the, the guys on the, on the side of the field are taking a much greater interest in what's going on out there. We see I've, a lot of encouragement as they try to get this team juiced up, so it's these guys are all right Tom here's Maddox slithering to the six yard line you may have noticed too wearing a jersey with a Henshaw on the back that is Matt Henshaw young freshman quarterback that is being redshirted for Florida State We're watching tonight from the sideline is the Knowles march on their second possession of the evening the significance of that of course is uh, his daddy was on the uh, staff here with Coach Bowden in the very early beginnings. George Henshaw. George Henshaw. Now gone on to a great NFL career. Chris can pick up the first down inside the one-yard line. They're going to give it to Maddox again. And stood up at the five, setting up the third down. Our quiz Hopkins was in there. Roderick two. Stevens, to a junior left end on the stop of Nick. Florida State continuing to pound between the tackles they want to get the ball into the hands of the running backs particularly Maddox a little bit more in situations where they're not back up in their own end of the field third and fourth for the first Rex guns into the end zone and it's caught for a touchdown by Tolman Gardner <laughs> Florida State's very first first quarter touchdown of the season. And you never would have thought it. You mentioned it earlier. Only three points in the first quarter in the first three ball games. And Florida State comes up with six and a chance for seven here on their second drive in game number four. Sabia Batia, freshman from Tampa. The tack on the extra point. Florida State drives the length of the field 80 yards on its second possession of the night and scores first playing at home tonight. It's 7 0. Seven -zero. Tallman Gardner, who made a sensational one handed catch. Covered about half the length of the field, 42-yard gain. Fittingly gets to catch the touchdown. Nice read by Chris that time, and a great route by Talman. Worked down against that in line, and then back inside for his third touchdown reception. You see the new co-captain, Javon Walker, one of the first over there to congratulate him. Remember a year ago when Atrus Bell, every ball he touched seemed to be a big play or a score. Tallman has that sparkle in him this year. That's his sixth catch of the season. Make that his seventh catch. And he scored three, three touchdowns. Times. Ten plays, 80 yards, almost five minutes on that drive. This is John Stone, one of the great kick returners in Wake history, and he shows you why with blocking. After the 40, he's got great track speed, and he's down the sidelines, finally out of bounds at the Seminole 36. He'll remind you of someone else that wore number two that happened to have another colored jersey on. Let me tell you something, folks. This kid can run. ACC 100 and 200 meter track champion and Jim Grove told us you see he's a football player see how he changed that arm over just like you teach he's a football player that runs track he's not a track person trying to play football but I believe that this will come back 
five yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. Now this is an unusual call against a team in possession of the football. It is a blow to the face mask by one of Stone's blockers. Well, after 14 penalties last week, Florida State will take any type of call, whether it's unusual, regular, or otherwise. There's a tremendous crowd here this evening, and I have to be honest with you, I think in the eyes of many, far more than we expected to see. But Dope looks packed as Anthony Young runs the option and explodes down the field. He, too, a track star, and Wake has scored. There are no penalty markers this time. 71 yards on Anthony Young's very first career carry in Tallahassee. Well, this should come as no surprise to the Florida State defense in that Anthony Young, the second of the two quarterbacks that rotate, is the third leading rusher for the Dukes. Option attack, and nobody picks up the quarterback. Busted coverage there. Bill Howard running up. Not sure who had who, but Howard runs right by the quarterback. Two people on the pitch, man. Nobody on the quarterback. Tyler Ash will tie this football game following the longest run of the season for Wake Forest. Anthony Young takes over for James McPherson. Platooning quarterbacks, and it's Young racing untouched 71 yards. This is a stunner. Wake Forest, 81 yards. Anthony Young runs the option to tie this game. Two that, touchdowns in less than a minute. 71-yard run. Florida State averages giving up 61 yards on the ground a game. You have the best rushing defense in the ACC, the Seminoles defense here to four, and it has been scalded by the Demon Deacons. Tyler Ash. The senior from Shelby, North Carolina, chops this very short. Well, that was a fair catch called for, but a fair catch not made. That'll be Florida State's second penalty. You can advance the ball once you've given the fair catch signal, and that may have been Chad Mater. Patrick Newton, actually. For Jim Grobe, a very impressive cut about him. Six years at Ohio, following 11 years as an assistant coach to fish Late the game. Day. After signaling for a fair catch, the runner ran more than two steps. Five yard foul. First down. I get back to Jim Grove. 11 years with Fisher DeBerry at Air Force. I would think the student athletes are very similar between those two schools. But when we talked to Jim on Thursday uh, via conference call, uh, we, we were asking him about the makeup, the mentality, and he compared it back to the Air Force Academy. Certainly the Wake Forest kids not as subject to the discipline that they are at the Academy, but from an academic standpoint, from their ability to work hard, understand, and think on their feet, very but very uh, similar to groups of, of uh, athletes. Chris Ricks. He's thrown a touchdown pass already tonight. Two big strikes. Throwing deep here, and he has Javon Walker at midfield. And Javon Walker shoved out of bounds by Marcus Magruder, the freshman quarter. That's three huge games, rather big games for Chris Ricks tonight. They're going deeper downfield, more vertical in the game plan early. Well, Wake will not run a lot of man-to-man. -man. They're not gifted enough athletically to blitz a, lot, blitz a lot and run a lot of man-to-man. -man. This time it's zone coverage, and it's a nice route, nice read, nice delivery. And you can exploit that against the Demon Deacons. If you'll be patient and the line will block and give your quarterback time, you can find the open holes in this Wake Forest. Quick pitch defense. right there. Andrews Bell. That's the first down. A gain of 12 following the strike for 31. Recall a week ago in Chapel Hill. There's a harp on this. The Seminoles' first eight snaps of that game were all some pretty vanilla runs. You see a lot more creativity in the... Uh, play calling a few more plays added to the play book and Florida State offensively responding to that. Donaldson the tight end set to the near side. He's his numbers and there's Maddox. Inside the 25 for Nick. So obviously here early the passing game opens up and forces Wake out of the box. All those helmets stacked up in the line of scrimmage creating room for Nick. 
and you know if the age-old school says that you have to establish the run in order to flow, throw the ball and uh -huh. coach bowden just just throws that out though he doesn't believe in that at all anymore he says you can establish the pass in order to open up the run but it's hard to do when you've got a first-year quarterback that's only started three or four ball games he looks sharp tonight play action again zipping it down the field and incomplete. The tight end has become a significant part of this offense in each of the last two games. It was Carver Donaldson's turn here. He's yet to record a catch this season. Donaldson, the, the receiver, you see him on the right-hand side, the receiver of the tight ends. Patrick Hughes, more of a blocker. That ball's just a little bit too far out in front of Carver. You think you had him there? Ah, uh, that could have been gone either way. But, uh -huh. uh, the ball was thrown up a, a, enough ahead that it would have been a spectacular catch. Oh, and the tight end was open. Well, that now out of the shotgun, second and ten, but uh, very close to the red zone. Blitz coming. Wake sells the house, flags down, throws to the corner. Fort made the catch, but he's out of bounds. Now back to the flag, and Wake may be offside. They were bringing the house against Chris Rick. But Chris stood right in there, stood tall, and delivered that ball right where he needed to go, just slightly overthrown. Crow makes a great catch. See the off signal, offside signal against Wade. He will hang tough. Well, well, there's no right. doubt about it. When we visited with him yesterday, he had that big old strawberry about the size of a of a cantaloupe. On offside <laughs> against the defense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Got the Second down. Bandage there on his right. He's got another abrasion there on his right arm. Got that big strawberry on his left uh, outside part of his calf. But I tell you this. He still looked good. The hair was in place. Oh, yeah, he's got the look. He's got the look. He carries himself like a quarterback. He got a break there. It's second down and five now. He and Jeff Bowden, the offensive coordinator, take a chance here. I like give it to Nick. Nick gets a seal block, makes one. Foot race for the end zone. Touchdown, Florida State. Side cuts when he got into the, the second layer there, the linebacker layer. That time, a nice seal block by the receiver outside. He bounces it outside and shows some pretty good speed getting by one and getting into the corner. Chance Gwaltney will be the holder for this freshman in Patria. Savia Patria. His second extra point. Florida State with big plays in this first quarter, including a 17-yard gallop for Nick Maddox. And it's Florida State by a touchdown in a still young game. A first quarter filled with big plays, huge plays in this game so far. 14-7 and Nick Maddox with his helmet now off, number 20 having raced 17 yards for the score. And there's no one happier to get back on the playing field than Nick Maddox. It's not pleased with how the offense performed, was not pleased with how he performed last week at UNC. And uh, you've seen some enthusiasm from a rather uh, subdued and laid back kind of guy who likes to do his talking with his feet. He's a lot more animated. He's halfway to 100 feet, and this game's all of 10 minutes old. Well, we've seen John Young once, or John Stone, rather. Here he comes again. Cracked well, though, at the 40, rather the 20, two-yard line again of a return of 19. Here's coming. Hey, guys, remember when Nick Maddox came out of high school? He was a highly tatted running back from North Carolina, but he was playing receiver until last year against Wake Forest. Still the call. Travis Miner sprained his ankle. Jeff Cheney blew out his knee. Davey Ford broke his collarbone. And Drake Jones got hurt. So it was that game against Wake where they moved Nick back to running back, where he's been ever since. And a pretty nice run by him to get the Seminoles back on top, Paul. Young back in. Here is Stone. Stood up by Kendall Cole. Actually, uh, lifted into the air and uh, belted to the sideline. Kendall Pope is having a tremendous season, this sophomore from Fort White, Florida, the second leading tackler on the year. He reads this nicely and a great athletic ability to move down the line of scrimmage. Watch this. 
first thing that hits is the back of the shoulder blades. And we talk about Monster, Bradley Jennings, and his ability to pop people, but 100, uh, excuse me, 217 pounds, Pope can bring a load too, and has really, really matured into his role. Played behind Tommy Polly last year, Polly now with the Rams and the NFL, and Pope has stepped right in making and continued to make big plays. And so much is made of all the changes on the offensive side of the football. What about all conference players like Pauley and Derek Gibson and leading tackler Brian Allen and Tay Cody and Cookie Thomas and Jamal Reynolds and David Warren. Second down following a gain of seven. The long pitch out to Terrence Williams and Williams has a knack for finding where the first down marker is and I think he got it into a cloud up at the 34-yard line. That looks to be a first down for this junior from Wilmington, North Carolina. His head coach will tell you he's only 170 pounds. He doesn't look like the meanest, toughest guy, but he moves the marker. He moves the chains for Jim Grove. And a tenacious worker on the practice field and in the weight room. Out of the gun. Got it for the air. Incomplete. That was Chris Holt, senior captain of free safety, in coverage on the play, working against Jason Anderson, the freshman receiver for Wake Forest. It's incomplete. And a nice job by Florida State to make sure that everybody gets matched up with someone. Hope very nearly picks this ball up. A lot of garnet jerseys matching up with the white jerseys. You see Chris directing traffic, called upon to be a little more vocal this week, along with a lot of people. Flying down. And the play is whistled to a halt. The Demon Deacons still looking for their first completed pass of the evening, although we've seen uh, Anthony Young race 71 yards for a touchdown in this game. And our referee, Tom Zamorski. Before the snap, ball start against the offense. Five yard penalty, repeat second down. Jim Grove, very few mistakes this year. A win on the road on opening night against East Carolina probably looked better on Labor Day weekend than it does now for East Carolina has struggled beating again today. They up into Appalachian State, which hasn't been easy for Wake to do through the years. And last week, fell by a touchdown to Maryland, which is off to one of its best starts in 15 years at 4 -0. Maryland won today over West Virginia. Keep it on the ground again for Terrence Williams, who's very capable of handling the ball a lot. In that win over East Carolina, Keith, he carried 36 times. We had 84 rushing attempts in the first three games. You can do the math there. Very nearly 30 a game on average. Very durable. Again, you see Pope and Jennings combining for the tackle. He's not the kind of guy that's going to be flashy. He's not the kind of guy that's going to jitterbug too much. He's a slashing kind of runner, but he puts up big numbers. On third down, meeting a bunch, Anthony Young. On the move, throws, and that's incomplete. Broken up. Brian McFadden, young freshman, who will get a lot of playing time tonight in the secondary with Malcolm Tatum out from a hand injury. Look at this defensive effort. Nice job by McFadden again. Matching up, getting close to jerseys. You see him all over. The Wake receiver, Fabian Davis. And as you mentioned, Pat McFadden going to see much more playing time. Paid him out with that broken hand. The Roy Smith still out. Necessitated to move Rufus Brown over to the other side. Stanford Samuel stays at home. McPherson cuts. PK Sam from his 31. About a step, step and a half, and then trouble for him. Ricky Perez, special teams hustle. And rather than the Sam, that's Dominic Robinson. For Bobby Bowden. Ranking fourth in the history of the game in victories and closing in now on Joe Paterno, who failed again today, unfortunately, to win. That Bear Bryant record tying 320-30 was beaten by Iowa. So Bobby with the win tonight would be his 318. Bobby likes playing Wake. He's 9-0, perfect against Wake Forest. Wake's only beaten Florida State once in half a century. There has been one time. Ricks. Right at the line of scrimmage, shovel it ahead to Atrus. That's a completed pass. Atrus to the 42-yard line. 
very close to being across the line of scrimmage. And at Adrian's Bell. Well, I, I, Chris has got a unique ability to know where he is on the field. Again, a very difficult throw moving to the left for a right-handed quarterback. Just flips it. Nice job. I think if A. Cruz had gone all the way across the field, it was a little more open. He chooses to come back. Still picks up about nine. But again, this is the creativity of the freshman. He's absolutely fierce, Paul. He, he, he doesn't mind doing anything. William McCray. Tuck Terry for the first down near midfield. Calvin Bayer, right defensive end on this stop. So they work the fullback into the offense here with Maddox offensively. Piling up some yards tonight. He posted 200 total yards in the first quarter against Wake Forest. Well, and you see Willie get his second carry. Only had nine in the first three games at Florida State, utilizing him a little bit more in this offensive attack. They were throwing to him early too on a screen that was intercepted by the linebacker in Brantley. On the gun. And he'll take it. It's caught. He's gone. That's a first down and plus midfield. With a Deacon 38 yard line. Well, don't ever kid yourself about this fact. And I, I'd like to see him race. I think Chris Ricks might be as fast, if not faster, than Charlie Ward in terms of foot speed. Certainly not as quick or as elusive, but once he starts heading north and south, he's just like a tailback in that he can run well on that six foot two frame. Uh, number 16 for a gain of 16. Remember against North Carolina, Florida State had its lowest offensive total in a decade, only 224 yards. They're about at 224 in this first quarter, which isn't over yet. Greg Jones on the pin. Greg Jones, his first tote of the night. Stop was made by number 28. The lowest Terrence of the decade Bracey. for Florida State. The offensive numbers last week. And here, Keith, they're right at 215 yards for offensive coordinator Jeff Bowden. Well, we knew that Florida State was going to open it up. There was no doubt about that. And they certainly have thrown the numbers up, representing a dedication to a little bit more wide open offensive attack. Three receivers. Passing look to this. Off he goes again. Inside the 30-yard line. The only danger, of course, is that you expose him to the big shots. On the keeper, like one he took there. Made by number 28, Ron Quasey. Well, the normal Florida State fan will love this. They say, great, we've got this quarterback that can run around. But you're exactly right, Paul. All it takes is one good hit, one misstep, one sprained ankle, catch an elbow underneath you, and uh, you're going to be sitting on the bench for a while. Chris is very tough and very durable. We've just, he's established that. But it's just not something I think you want to get into the regular routine of doing, and that being your quarterback running the ball consistently. And he needs about that much for the first down. Ricks has thrown for 128 yards tonight, rushed for close to 20. Nick Maddox with nearly 60 yards himself. Well, at Wake's expense. Not for. Uh, couple of mistakes the interception and of course the long run by McPherson Demon Deacon quarterback or rather Anthony Young and be a perfect start for FSU Chris is really working himself into a comfort level with this offense you can just see it in the way he carries himself and the way he conducts himself checking off at the line five on the play clock Chad Mater, his first carry of the season, which might be the uh, final play of the first quarter. Big Chad Mater, the senior captain, originally signed with Millsaps College, walks on after transferring to Florida State by his senior year as a captain. Here gets his first carry of the year at home in Dope through 15 minutes of football. His team, the Seminoles, lead Wake Forest in this ACC affair, 14-7. College football capital tonight. Smiles on 
in the faces of Seminole fans, 226 yards of total offense in the first quarter. Paul Kennedy, Keith Jones, Tom Block on the sidelines. We head toward our second period of play. And on the other side, Wake Forest was 75, but 71 of those yards coming on a single carry. Great field position for Chris. To open the second quarter. He steps up. He throws, and it's patted away at the goal line with a flag in. Eric King in coverage. Wake Forest quarterback on Tom and Gardner. And a flag is dropped. Go against Gardner or the freshman corner in Eric King. And it's against Wake Forest to the goal line. Nice play by King to knock the ball down. You'll see it right on the right-hand side of your screen. But he's got that left hand on the ball. And what always happens to defensive backs, he's got that right hand on the back of the receiver. And even if you're not pushing, even if you don't have pressure, you get that off arm on the receiver, you're going to get called every time for that. Well, for Florida State, it's 13th first down. For Wake Forest, this will be its fourth penalty of the football game. And the ball will be spotted half the distance to the goal, just outside the 10-yard line. Mater in front of Maddox. In the backfield, Maddox on the carry. Mater leads it. Quick feet to the edge. And the four-yard line with King having it by the collar. Now what he lacked in North Carolina in his return to his native state at the CB, he looks he looks quicker. He is quicker. And that's one of the things that uh, is an intangible about football, Paul. You can go out on one given Saturday and have the same physicalness about you. We're talking about Nick Maddox. And come out the next Saturday, and if you're playing inspired football, you'll be just that much quicker. You'll make that much of a quicker read. And, and this is almost an entirely new Nick Maddox running football. Looks great. A load formation here, both McCray and Mater, two beefy fullbacks in front of Maddox. It's the carry with interference. He hurdles of his second touchdown. The Seminoles load it up for Nick Maddox, and it's another six for Nick. Right into the short side of the field, too. Great, great effort all the way around. Nick hurtling into that end zone. Out of Gwaltney's hole, gets his third extra point. Florida State has three touchdowns on the board against the Demon Deacons. We are less than 20 seconds into our second quarter, and number 20 is into the end zone for a second time. With his second touchdown. And look at his average tonight. Close to seven yards per carry. You're right, he is quicker. John Stone. His dangerous return man in the ACC. 14th in the country last year in returns with Stone. And the year before that, Paul, he had a six-yard better average, but he didn't have enough returns to qualify. He'd been in the top ten. Get another look at this uh, short side run, Keith, with the... Uh, Fullbacks leading the way. Well, nice job by McCray, and then just hurdles does Maddox, the lone remaining deep that was going to keep him out of the end zone. And whether he had to go over, under, sideways, or around, I guarantee you Nick was going to get the end zone. Uh, again, there's no huddle look out of the uh, Wake Forest Demon Deacons. They'll get to the line of scrimmage very early on the play clock, and then all their play based on the defensive scheme and formation. And here's the pitch on the end to Fred State. Not a lot of running room on the sophomore's first carry of the night. And there's a flag thrown in as well following the stop by Abdul Howard on that Wake Forest sideline. Two flags over there, in fact. Whatever happened, they both saw it, they being the officials. Abdul Howard had a mild concussion last week against North Carolina. That's not good news for the Seminoles. Is it the 5 or the 15 variety? Inadvertent face mask against the defense. Five-yard penalty. 
Second down. Uh, what is a mild concussion when it happens to somebody First else? Down. The mild concussion <laughs> is where you can come in on Sunday and you still know your address and phone number. After the ball game, you come in on Sunday to check in. You see the inadvertent face back there. A lot of garnet jerseys around. I'm not know who that is. Stone. See a lot of that tonight. Just trying to get the ball in the hands of a man, as you said, that at one time his junior year was the regarded as the fastest man in the ACC as the 100 and 200 meter champion. Dedicated himself to football, did Stone. He'll be working left to right. They'll run this six or seven times in a ball game. Set out track this past spring so that he could participate in spring drills under the new coaching staff for the first time, dedicating himself to football so he could get better. And he's probably got a future at the next level. Somebody will use him in a specialty situation. On the reverse to him, and look at the blocking as well. You have uh, outstanding speed. You have blockers. And this time, I think the blockers got in the way. They floated toward the sideline. And he's hemmed in at the Florida State 38-yard line after crossing midfield. Big play out of John Stone, a gain of 23. Let's take another look. Paul, one thing I just noticed, you know, with all the injuries Florida State's had this year and the attrition, remember Chris Woods left the team this week. Right now, FSU has a, a couple of guys, Brian Ross and Mike Shaw, playing the two tackle spots that aren't used to getting a lot of playing time. Staten tripped up here by Chris Hope. And it seems that that is going to be an ongoing storyline, Tom, and Keith, throughout the year. Uh, the weaving of this tapestry of, of faces into Florida State. This is not a dominating class. It is a talented class, but one that is continually, it seems, going to be in transition. Who plays in different places? And a lot of two and three seeing more playing time than they normally would because of either attrition, as Tommy mentioned, or injury. Inside State. This is like single wing football of yesteryear. And you begin to speak of men like Pop Warner. And before Bear Bryant, the formations, the angles coming off in scissor-like fashion, the traps inside for Wake Forest. And you have to be very disciplined as a defense. And one of the things this offense will do is take advantage of over-aggressiveness. You get one person out of step, and they can go big. Wake is on the move. And Young called down. Nice tackle there by Kendall Polk on Anthony Young with assignment football. I mean, you played the option, Keith, to find it, assignment football. Everybody has a specific job to do, and if one person fails and the offense takes advantage of it, that's the pressure that it places. You saw Young that time as he jumped up, Paul tapping himself on the chest, should have pitched that ball. It was wide open. He was saying, I know, I made a mistake. Inside again, this is Staten. And sophomore Fred State has been a big part of this drive. We don't four carries. You don't lose a lot when Staten comes in for Williams. He had 27 carries on the season coming in, averaging about 10 a game. His per rush average actually better than Terrence Williams. Staten at 4.7, Williams at 4.5. They interchange him and don't lose a lot. 16 plays for Wake tonight, make it 17. And have been better than they. But 14 a bit on the ground. State in front for a loss. Bradley Jennings, Michael Bolware. Two linebackers. There is Bolware. Up to meet him in his own backfield. They've only attempted two passes in this game. Wake Both averages, and we've established this, Wake averages, as you see Michael there, 220 yards a game on the ground. They do throw it reasonably well, Paul, averaging a little over 180. But tonight, almost against the team that is excellent against the rush he throws it down at the 25 yard line picked off by Kendall Pope assignment football he stayed home and again Paul you can teach the assignments you can get kids to line up the right way you can show them schemes but the one thing you can't teach them is how to play football Kendall Pope, as we've talked about all season long, and last year as a freshman. He's just a football player. He has an uncanny knack.
to just be around the football. That time they were trying to throw the ball back to State. Man covered by Florida State. Kendall's all over him and is just right in the right place at the right time. Not because he's lucky, but because he's a heads-up football player. First turnover of this game earned by Florida State and on the carry Greg Jones. And I believe I'm right on this. It's only the second interception thrown this season now through uh, four games by Wake Forest quarterback duo. That is correct, and for Florida State, that's only their fourth interception now in the fourth game. Oh, uh, Wake had it going, too, on that drive. They were marching on the Seminoles and doing it on the ground against one of the league's, the league's uh, best rush defense. And that's a testament and a credit to the Wake Forest offense and to their staff. Florida State with the big defensive turnover now going back the other way. And leading by two touchdowns. As Ricks is right back to left. Out of bounds. He threw his bell. A gain of 16 yards in front of Marcus McGruder, a freshman corner. Great read by Ricks that time. He tried to get the ball. First read would be a post route on your right hand side going across the middle. Not open. Goes back outside to a wide, wide open. A true spell. Florida State converts the first down. A week ago, Wake Forest surrendered to Maryland in a loss. 519 yards of total offense, including a couple of very big scoring plays. Florida State has half that on the board right now, and Rex will get more. He has time to set his feet. Throw for A trues, and he overshoots him downfield. But this is shaping up to be for Florida State. I mean, you do the math on this. It could be a 500, if not 600-yard night in terms of a total yard production. Well, what you can see is the commitment of Florida State from the coaches to the players that they were going to put in the more wide-open offensive game plan. Jeff Bowden there with the headset. Conservative play calling through the first three games to try to give Chris Ricks the opportunity to mature into his role. And now almost uh, Katie bar the door. Let's just do everything we can. Second man through is Greg Jones. And the sophomore from Hubert, South Carolina, is a power running back, earns a solid four from Florida State. He carries about 240 pounds on that frame. Senior linebacker Ed Barbara Corgi, Waffles tackle. Very muscular 235, 240 pound frame is Jones. You see those big biceps, big powerful legs. The only knock on Greg right now, Paul, is he's a little slow getting to the hole. He doesn't have that explosion that he'll learn and will come with him where he hits at the point of attack quicker. Third down. Blitz coming for Wade. Against the Blitz, Gardner made the first down catch. Big game for him as they pick on a freshman corner and Eric King. A gain of 10, they'll move the first down stage. And again, you see Florida State throwing the football with confidence, nice isolation action right now, nothing fancy, turn inside, work outside, fingertip catch, nice delivery, bring it in, tuck it in. We saw Javon Walker, heard Javon Walker talking about that earlier, catch the ball, tuck it in, turn up field. Maybe the talk of, and we certainly miss Anquan Bolden and Robert Morgan, but as this receiving core begins to hold on to the ball with more consistency, some of that talk will die down. Ricks, Chase, flush to the sideline. And he has to step out of bounds. He loses close to 10 yards. Back across to his side of midfield. Now the next progression of that, and Chris would be the first to know it, once you're outside of those tackle boxes, as long as you throw the ball across the line of scrimmage, you can dump that ball out. Instead of stepping out of bounds and taking that loss, as we get another look at it, isolation action, he's going to work to his right. Nothing open, he settles. Not, now flick it outside. Don't take the loss, throw it out of bounds. There's no intentional grounding once you're outside that tackle box. I didn't see the staff. It wasn't a look of consternation. I, you live with a freshman. You have to practice patience. Easier said than done. Another blitz coming from White. Ricks with man coverage has Walker open. He's got another touchdown. Barely. <laughs> but by inches, Javon Walker just got in. Don't count your TDs before they hatch. Walker tripped up, stumbled just over the goal line. You were, you were helping him in all the way, though, Paul. I was hoping he wasn't short. Nice, nice throw by Chris Rickson. Great adjustment. We'll get another look at it in a minute. Great adjustment to the ball by Javon Walker. Atia, a busy first half. 
Javier with his fourth extra point following a 52-yard touchdown strike. Another quick six out of Ricks. Chris Ricks has just hurled his second touchdown pass of the first half. Nice, nice adjustment by Javon Walker as he works back to the inside to pick this ball up and very nearly stumbles before getting across the goal line. Great recovery. You know, Javon had an 85-yard reception called back last week. That time he brings one in for 52. As you see, seven plays, 74 yards, a little less than two minutes. Javon Walker's first touchdown catch of the year. That new promotion to captain. Chris Ricks has thrown for over 200 yards in the first half. Florida State has amassed 300 yards of total offense for the old master. What a difference a week makes. And he knows in quest of what would be for Ricks and the Seminole tradition, a 10th consecutive Atlantic Coast Conference Championship. Here is how they stack up with the third of the season having been played. You see Maryland up top, Virginia tied with them. That is a drop on a tight end of the flat right Thomas off the arm of uh, James McPherson. Uh, they've yet to complete a pass 0 for 4 now. Maybe we can get another quick look at that uh, ACC lineup on the standings here. George Clemson with an upset today of top 10 ranked Georgia Tech. First, the Seminoles have to play both teams later in the year. Yeah, it wasn't pleasant about the household. Last Miss week, Ann was not happy last week. Last week, Tommy, of course, upended by Virginia. McPherson. And that is held on to the first catch the first completed pass of this game for Wade. Freshman Jason Anderson, a tough catch from McPherson. Put a flag back at the line of scrimmage. Ground level look coming right at you. As we commented with Ricks, again, a tough throw for a right-handed quarterback. Nice delivery by McPherson. And Anderson brings down the first Demon Deacon reception. But we do have a little uh, counsel going on at the line of scrimmage. Holding against the offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat second down. Uh, Wake has committed another mistake uh, for Jim Grove's team. That's its fifth penalty of this first half. So they have surrendered big plays, making mistakes, and turned the ball over. Interception by Kendall Polk that produced for Florida State its fourth first half touchdown. Stone in motion, takes the handoff, cuts back. Wrapped up and dropped. Not hurt. First man to it was Abdul Howard who helped out. But Wake tonight is having an audience with the Pope. The game that he's playing. Howard will not get credit for the tackle, but he's the one that allows Kendall to come over. Howard comes up, takes away the outside, forces him back inside, spins off of him, but Pope's right there to mop up. No gain, third and forever. Florida State shows four coming in this pass rush. They look to trap the inside. There's going to be nothing there. Jeff Womble, number 91, the nose guard, stuffed the play at the point of attack. Florida State lining up with both their nose and their tackle right over the center, side by side. Big, uh, big number 91, Jeff Womble, got out there and just disrupted everything. Is that a good job out of Mickey Andrews? I thought I read his lips. Good job. He, he will praise the players when they do well, believe it or not. McPherson punts at midfield. For Florida State, Dominic Robinson on this return to the 32-yard line. Great field position. A 41-yard punt, a 19-yard return. And Mickey animated during that series. <laughs> you gotta love it. 30 years as an assistant coach, and he has the passion of a man 
fraction of his hair. Driven competitor. I keep telling you, though, Paul, his, his grandbabies call him Pretty Poppy. I guess I'll get up the courage one day to call him that to his face, and I'll make sure I've got two lines of egress when I do. Well, he just has a very high standard of excellence. This make it. Bricks playing excellent football the saving throws. Oh, it's no touchdown pass. B.J. White. The freshman's first catch goes for six. Folks, there's your backup safety at the beginning of fall camp. B.J. Ward, highly touted, extremely highly touted defensive back prospect when he came into the Florida State program. With great athletic ability, moved him over the wide receiver, wide receiver side, and you saw great hands and why it's a good move. Bacha, a fifth extra point. We still have seven and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter, but B.J. Ward on the receiving end of a 31-yard touchdown. It's the first time in his Seminole career he has ever touched the football. The special team set him up shop at the 31-yard line, and Chris, on the very next snap, Fires a touchdown strike to B.J. Ward. He has hurled three touchdown passes in the first half tonight. Well, we heard Chris say all throughout the week that he was looking forward to the coaching staff allowing the offense to be opened up. He was ready, and so far tonight he's shown that he was indeed ready. Credit Jesse Stein as well, number 85, a transfer, something in common with Jim Grobe. He transferred from the Air Force Academy to Florida State. Jim used to be an assistant there, but uh, Stein has kicked off magnificently this season, time and again, pinning Stone five, six yards in his end zone. And again, we see the rotating quarterbacks, Anthony Young coming in to play this series, James McPherson last series. And one completed pass in this game. Ball, fumble, flag down. And we'll uh, sort this out. So Wake right now, it needs to uh, maintain its composure because it's it's gotten away from them. We still have 7.25 to go in the uh, first half. And they're trailing 35-7 here and starting to show signs of the jitters. Offsides, against the defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Step back, let's uh, check in with Tom. Hey, Paul, as you know, this is the first home game for Florida State since the attack on America, and one of the things that they're showing in this place is patriotism, the red, white, and blue bunning around the stadium. And above the scoreboard, only the American flag is flying, not just the ACC flags, uh, but just the American flag. And the marching chiefs will have a special tribute with patriotic music coming up at halftime. And we'll have that for you. Thank you, Tom, on our telecast here this evening. Inside handoff for no Williams up the middle. Let's correct something here. The one completion so far in this game to Jason Anderson for Wake was erased by a penalty on the Demon Deacon. So still with 7-10 to go in the first half, either McPherson or Anthony Young have yet to complete a pass against Mickey's defense. And again, credit the Florida State defense from the pass defense standpoint. And Wake has had some success running the football. Don't go away from the thing that you do good. And this isn't going to uh, get him back in the game. Trapping inside here, Terrence Williams, although they have rushed for 133 yards in the first half. And that's the sum total of their offense. Again, we see this fast-paced attack. They just snap the ball, run the play, line up, and then the quarterback will shout out the signal. Well, they're fast to the line of scrimmage, but not necessarily fast to snap the ball. Take plenty of time. Fabian Davis in motion. And for Terrence Williams, here his seventh carry for all of 10 yards in this first half. Eric Moore, a freshman left in for Florida State on this stop. Williams, of course, averaging 125 yards a game coming into tonight. 100 yards in each and every game he's played, 158 against East Carolina, 116 at the expense of Appalachian State, and most impressively, an even 100 on 23 carries. Oh, we could go against Maryland. Stone to the outside. Alan Augustin flushes into the boundary, along with Brian McFadden. Alan Augustin is 
had a solid start to his sophomore season, especially on special teams. And he's in there right now for Kendall Pope, giving Kendall a breather. Dustin plays on that backside, that free side, as you mentioned, behind Pope. A sophomore, great special teams player, now getting the opportunity here to get some defensive snaps. Wonderful football, sideline to sideline. Out of the, out of the gun, one hit, heavy pressure. That could be considered a lateral to Stone. And he is spotted at the 30-yard line. Uh, they rule that incomplete. But where he was and where he threw, that appeared to be a lateral rather than a forward pass. Very close to it. Of course, very alertly, Stone got on top of it, whether he trapped it or caught it or otherwise. Coming right at you. Pressure from the backside. And now he throws it to get away from it. He's across the 30, throws to the 30. That is a lateral. That is a lateral. Break. Still without a completed pass. Young now. Yes, Don't even have to look. The second interception tonight, the first two of the year for the Pope. Kendall Pope at the bottom of that pile has demanding defensive coordinator Mickey Andrews actually applauding his sophomore. What a great athletic move here by Pope. Zone coverage by Florida State. They're just reading, don't want him to get outside. Gets up and gets that right hand on it. Bats it to himself. And as you mentioned, the second interception here in the first half for the linebacker. Great, great effort. Add to it four and a half tackles tonight for Kendall Pope. Tremendous game for him. And Florida State takes over inside the Wake 40, and this is Rick's territory. He wanted to go to the end zone. Instead on the run, he'll stumble to the 31-yard line. At least he got down for Marquise Hopkins. I got a good He's shot in on ball. him. He's trying to get the ball down the field to Javon Walker. Florida State wanting to strike quickly. Obi Chikomon. The safety, free safety, comes over and helps double on the outside, and alertly, Chris picks it up. Nobody open. Just to work his way to the sideline, and not too gracefully, but at least it wasn't a flip. Florida State second short. Jones behind a pair of tight ends. An offensive formation made for the run. R.D. Montgomery, an outside linebacker, wrapped him up. There's R.D. from Wilmington, North Carolina, the tallest Demon Deacon. He stands 6'6", and he's a freshman. A wonderful future for him. I think Wake is deeper on the offensive side of the ball than they are on this side. So just the second tackle on the season for R.D. He plays behind Mike Hamler. The Rob linebacker position. Ricks, man coverage again to Gardner. The six-yard line and down to the one. He lost the ball. That is a fumble, however. Well, the spotting correct that at the two. It's Atrus Bell. Atrus Bell to the two-yard line. First and goal again at 24. With those prior receptions, Atrus now with 17 games, 17 consecutive games with at least one catch. Trying to get into the end zone for his first touchdown of the 0-1 campaign. Nice delivery by Chris and works down that sideline. Well, that's very close to being a fumble. Hopefully his knees were down. But the officials right on the top of it. Of course, Florida State will take every break they can get from the Eagles. First and goal. Inside give to Chad Mater trying to get him a touchdown. Mater to the one-yard line. And Chad Mater has yet to score a touchdown in his seminal career. We told you the Brooksville Florida senior captain has already earned two degrees from Florida State. That was his first carry of the season, wasn't it? Well, he had one earlier. Oh, one earlier. Had not had any since coming in into this ball game. As we've told you throughout, Wake Forest yet to complete a pass for Chris Ricks. His young career, his best night offensively. Not Greg Jones. Cuts it back to the score. Jones with the sixth touchdown for Florida State in this first half. 
Manoles with more than 40 points. Pitch look out of the eye. Formation and great power running by Greg as he cuts it back to get into the end zone. Five different Seminoles have scored six different touchdowns. And Pecha has been perfect with the PAT each and every time. The route is on. We've yet to reach halftime. 42 points, balanced by 380 yards of total offense. And for Greg Jones, the sophomore with his second touchdown of the season. Again, good look up front for Chad Mater, known for his blocking ability. He's going to get on the linebacker, and then Greg's going to cut right behind him great vision by a young running back that is continuing to develop continuing to learn his role every play call has a particular way you want it to go and then it has a secondary read and once you get running at 10 and 15 and 20 times in a ball game over the course of your career you know what your options are you see Jeff Bowden there certainly a little more pleased with the way things are going Clint Purvis the team chaplain there with Greg what a great job Clint does with these kids, particularly during the uh, tragic death of Devon Darling during the workouts, the shooting of Eric Powell down in Orlando. And this team going through a lot of adversity and maybe, maybe just maybe, coming together and putting it together. Nearly 80,000 have come together tonight at Doe Campbell Stadium. out of which the game is being televised live throughout the state of Florida and of course Tallahassee and the Panhandle requires some driving for many that come from as far away as Key West and Miami. There's the former Air Force Academy cadet of Jesse Stein who's been kicking the ball into the end zone time and time again. This one is a yard deep getting stone return. And he fails to reach the 20 yard line. So very good special teams coverage. Patrick Newton on this stop following the uh, Stein kick. While we have a moment, Seminole Pride starts early. Florida Dairy Farmers are looking for the most spirited young fan. If you're between 8 and 12 years old and you love cheering on the Seminoles, then you can win. One lucky fan with VIP treatment. Tickets to a game, an all-access tour, a chance to meet Bobby Bowden and so much more. For information, go online at floridamilk.com or call one 800 954 mil. Show us your darn it gold spirit. A spirited defense tonight in Kendall Pope uh, with his candidacy for the ACC's player of the week. The peppering shot on Fred State near the sophomore running back. That is six tackles tonight, two interceptions on Kendall Pope. And just a sophomore. Those are the things you expect from a redshirt senior. Marvin Jones and Sam Howard. Derek Brooks, legacy of wonderful linebackers. This is a rope to the sideline for Stone. That was well done. James McPherson on the move for the senior split in. Again as well. And we talked about it, but McPherson no more for his passing ability for Coach Jim Grove there and the Demon Deacons. Anthony Young, as he showed us earlier, a little bit better known for his running ability. Very first catch of the night for Jim Grove. His offense, very first completed pass. A gain of a dozen at the 36. And a junior from Tucson, Arizona. And James McPherson takes the inside hand up. Well, actually gave it to Fred State. And Kevin Emanuel read it well. That didn't fool anybody. Kevin Emanuel majoring in library studies. So the librarian read it well. But he's not quiet on the football field, trust me. Nice pinch move by Florida State. Everybody going to the inside. Emmanuel beating his man inside. Comes up with his second tackle for a loss in the 2001 campaign. So you have the hook on that. A slap route. Well, they were lucky was wait that Abdul Howard didn't intercept it. He gambled, he knew it was coming, he's mad at himself. They find the freshman, Jason Anderson. And Abdul Howard had a beat on the football and missed it. I think Abdul actually read it too quick. He actually ran by the plane of the ball and he threw it back behind me. He had such a quick break on it. All the days. 
continue to work that unique option. They see it. And you will see a bit of the Air Force Academy look in here, which was so successful in the old Western Athletic Conference, as well as Ohio University, in what is a coaches' conference, and we all respect what has been done in the MAC, the Mid American Conference. There is no doubt about the talent of this young man. He brought it almost his entire coaching staff with him to wait. They're building the foundation of a good program, and he's a guy that can make it happen. McPherson throws. That ball's latched on to by Fabian Davis. And the junior. And that get away from Rufus Brown, but uh, they pick up 15 yards with the Demon Deacons. Fabian Davis, his first catch. Again, Rufus Brown getting his first start in base defense with Malcolm Tatum out. Jason Anderson, who leads all Atlantic Coast Conference freshmen in receiving yards per game, could make the diving grab. Promising future for this freshman from Charlotte, the second leading receiver on the year for the Deacons. Great 16.8 yard per reception average for Anderson. Not a lot that uh, Dan Grove and his staff can really do, but continue to work on their game plan almost kind of ignore the score, Paul. Stone starts in motion, the pitch comes out to State, who can't get outside. And is wrestled out by Darnell Dockett. How does a 280-pound defensive tackle chase a running back and beat to the edge? Great muscle and great determination. Hey, all of these defensive tackles from Florida State, because of injuries and the things that have happened, have had to work hard in the practice maybe in the best shape collectively that they've ever been under Coach Odell Higgins. And what that means is you're not as winded you know, here with uh, 43 seconds left of the second quarter looking forward to halftime. You're able to move laterally side to side and run down a running back every now and then. That'll get some moves in Oz in the film room. Dominating half of play for the Seminoles so far this season. McPherson throws. He's got straight and wide open. Dayton hurdles down to the eight-yard line. A play fake for West State. He runs into the flag, gets behind the linebackers, and gains 28 to stop the clock with half a minute remaining. Well, again, this play-action fake, taking advantage of Florida State's aggressiveness. That time, Kendall Pope, not sure if he's supposed to be matched up on State, but certainly he's trailing it. Pope looking to make something happen, gets a little too aggressive, potentially, and Pope back gets behind him. On the end of round. There it goes, Stone for a touchdown. Touchdown, Demon Deacons, who drive the length of the field, an eight-yard gallop by John Stone, and Wake has its second score of the night. Or check that Fabian Davis on the score. Only two rushes for Davis, who backs up Stone. Stone gets the majority of those carries because of his speed, but uh, Davis takes it in for the Deeks. They score their second touchdown here of the first half. Nice march by the junior James McPherson. And now Tyler Ann and the extra point. And the kick is through. Anthony Young had a 71-yard gallop for his touchdown. McPherson on the long march of nine plays. Ash polishes off the PAT. Fabian Davis on the end around. Nice end around. Great block on Kendall Pope allows him to cut back inside of Will Howard. Fabian Davis gets his first touchdown on the ground. That matches one he had through the air in an earlier contest. Tim plays 80 yards, just a little under three minutes. And Stone, the sprinter, and Fabian Davis, who is an ACC triple jump champion. Also, uh, one of the top ten long jumpers. Yeah, he long jumped 24 feet with uh, Fabian Davis. That's about my triple jump. Right. Try a long jump of a 24 feet. That would be uh, eight yards. But that's great. That is a long way in the air. That's my triple jump. <laughs> About as long as his touchdown run was. Yeah. Well, there you go. If he got to run his start, he could have jumped in from there. <laughs> the comments of Keith Jones, Tom Block, our sideline reporter. I'm Paul Kennedy, our producer director tonight, Bill Moore, from all of us at Sunshine Network. Delighted you could join us on this Saturday night.
for college football from Doe Campbell Stadium. Ash chops at the football, kicking short once again, this time out of bounds. Only spotted upfield at the Seminole 35-yard line. With that drive, Wake now with a little over 200 yards of total offense, right at 221. That matches Chris Ricks and his offense's 380-yard output. Florida State with 22 seconds left here in the second quarter has all three of their timeouts. You, uh, you just down it on one knee and uh, take it to the locker room. Certainly at halftime, we look forward to the pleasure of your company. This should be this tremendous, uh, tremendously exciting. A, a patriotic salute as performed by the largest marching band in America. In America. The marching yeah. Chiefs. They offered a spectacular pregame show. We'll have the highlights for you, of course, and we'll check in with Tom. Here from the coaches, Nick Maddox. Two first-half touchdowns from Nick Maddox. He was Sterling at the outset of this game in the first quarter. Florida State led 14 to 7 at the end of the first period, and a huge second period, counting 42 points in all nearly 400 yards of offense. Yes. Stand on your feet, Seminole fans, says Nick Maddox. An exceptional performance tonight, returning home. 42-14 hours score, and let's check in with Tom. All right, thanks, Paul. Coach, I do not have to be pleased with the, the output of your offense. Yeah, I am uh, I, I'm pleased with every bit of it if uh, they hadn't got that long run. But, I mean, you can't be greedy. You know, we're winning the ball game. It seems like we're seeing the development of a young quarterback in Chris Ricks. He's really showing you he's got a lot of games. Well, he really has. He's got a, he brings so much to the table. Uh, uh, and I'm, he's doing better than I really thought he would at this stage. How long do you stay with him here the way the game's going? Obviously, you still want to get reps for your offense. Well, uh, I'm not sure. Possibly come back and let him start and see if he get another touchdown and then go with your other quarterback. You know, uh, he does need at least another position. Like, you can't move the ball. You'll have to leave it in there until we get some ball. All right, good luck in the second half. Thank you, Dr. Paul. He's a little happier this week than he was at halftime last week, Paul, and deservedly so, 42-14 Knowles. Understandable, Tom. Nick Maddox tonight has rushed for 75 yards in the first half, 125 yards in all out of the ground game alone. Nick with long jumps, including a touchdown gallop of 17. Moments ago, a second touchdown as well. Nick Maddox and the Seminoles rolling to a dominating first half performance and leading 42-14. The marching Chiefs next on Sunshine. We're set for our second half this evening on Sunshine Network. Great to have you along, Paul Kennedy, Keith Jones, Tom Block on the sidelines. Florida State led 14 to seven at the end of the first quarter and uh, put 28 more points on the board in the second team to lead as we head toward the third in commanding fashion. How about the numbers on Chris Ricks? 11 for 15 for 262 yards. Three touchdowns, only one pick. Atrus Bell, five catches, 92 yards, and then the, the trio of touchdown receptions. Talman Gardner, Javon Walker, B.J. Ward. Gardner with three receptions, 56 yards. Walker with two at 83. And B.J. Ward, as we mentioned, that first catch, 31 yards and a touchdown. If you're just joining us, the nine-time reigning Atlantic Coast Conference champion, Florida State Seminole, return now to the field. They have lost once this year in the ACC play, but the league race is far from over. Consider the fact that earlier today in Atlanta, Clemson upset Georgia Tech in overtime, 47 to 44. North Carolina won again, 17 to nine over NC State. Virginia victorious at the expense of Duke, 31 to 10. And a Maryland outside the league. Maybe even better than advertised. And Ralph Friedgen's return to his alma mater, 32 to 20, besting the West Virginia Mountaineers. You know, you see the updated statistics, as we mentioned, Maryland atop, Virginia tied with them. North Carolina now at two and one. Florida State, if things hold the course, will improve to two and one. 
bunching up at the top. You're not seeing Florida State run away with it as you have in the past. And again, Coach Bowden talking during the uh, Riders tour in August about how he felt like the ACC would be improved over last year. A lot of new blood, a lot of new offensive coordinators, some new head coaching. And uh, we're seeing some teams we don't historically all expect to win that many ball games doing real well. Uh, Bobby Bowden, his team, which is ranked in the top five in each of the last 14 years at season's end, took quite a tumble this week, all the way down to 15. And uh, here was Bobby's reaction on what a spill that was. Well, there's no doubt about it. We did have a big drop in the polls, a lot further than I thought. However, remember, we were on national television, and we didn't look good. So, I mean, that, the people that vote saw it, you know, so... They put us way down there. That's fine. Uh, we got to, you know, our schedule allows us to go down there. We still got the number one team in the nation coming in here, and we're going to play the number two teams in the nation, you know, at the end of the year. So we got enough, and we got number seven team in the nation on our schedule. So we got plenty of people ahead of us that if we could win, we would make a gradual climb back up. I'll bet you that whoever plays for the national championship this year will have at least one loss. John Stone on the return out to the 30 seven yard line and the number one team in the nation just so happens to be headed this way two weeks from today on the Miami Hurricanes it's a 37 yard return for John Stone and here comes the Demon Deacons who uh, concluded the first half with a long touchdown drive well done engineered by James McPherson and uh, he opened the game he'll start the second half he will start the second half and as you mentioned a great drive to close that second quarter Here's McPherson on the roll, throwing, and that's a tough catch across midfield by Fabian Davis, who kept that drive with a seven-yard touchdown. He takes a shot from Rufus Brown, and linebacker Bo Ware, Fabian Davis holds on, the fifth complete pass tonight for McPherson. We've talked a lot about John Stone and his speed. We haven't mentioned Davis much until that last drive. He's actually the leading receiver for the Wake Forest team and Deacons. Had 11 catches coming into the night. They're slowly but surely getting him into the offensive game plan. The man that's been very quiet tonight in the game plan. Terrence Williams, second in the league in rushing when this day began. Second only to Maryland's sensational sophomore, Bruce Perry. It's Perry and Williams 1-2 in terms of uh, ground production in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Williams finishing, according to our stats, the first half with seven carries, just 12 yards. For number 12, all in that backfield. Davis started in motion, a pitch to Williams, and uh, Chris Holt, the senior captain, is out there to greet him. The free safety rolled right up to him and wrapped him up. Just a three-yard gain on a something that is designed to go 12 or 15. Again, Florida State during halftime, they'll sit down. Chris Hope and company will go through the defensive scheme and the requirements that are necessary to play at home and stay at home against this option attack. Getting two to convert on third down, Davis on the move. Now work it inside. Now there are linemen that are capable up front for Wake Forest. We haven't talked about the Deeks offensive unit this evening very much, but Vince Azzolina, their senior center, number 53, with some push flanked by uh, a couple other seniors, and Michael Collins, and Mike Mooseberger, the guard. So at the apex of that front, Azzolina and company, they played a lot of snaps. Azzolina with his 29th consecutive start for Wake Forest as well. He's a pretty good cook. Both yes. Pick up a match of pasta and no time. It's Azzolina over the football. will be snapping it from the head of the person. Oh, high. He juggles it. And his chase. Flag in. Flag in behind the quarterback in James McPherson. Azzolina with too much spice on that dish to his quarterback. He must be a disciple of Emerald. <laughs> Bang, pow. It was high. You'll see another look at it. Comes back hot and high. Good job by McPherson just to bring it in. Jackson misses on the outside. Bowler overruns, but plenty of Garnet jerseys behind him. And the holding call tonight against Wake. This is their second holding infraction from Jim Grove's team. 
Now, Grove told us something interesting about his offensive lineman, as you see the updated penalty statistics. He doesn't care to have those big 330, 350-pound monsters. He wants them to be in the 280 to 285 range and be quick, and that's the type of lineman you need in this offense where it's geared towards options and reading. Davis clear across the formation. They trap back to the near side, and there is running room for Williams against the grain. Good-looking play there, net seven. Tom, what do you got down on the Williams, the ball carrier. Hey, Paul, another injury for Florida State. Oh, Jeff Wombo, you can see walking around by here, right here. He has his whole left arm taped up. He's got a hyperextended left elbow. They're kind of taking a wait-and-see approach. In other words, if the game gets interesting, he could still go, but I know they'd like to keep him out. Tony Benford has been in next to Darnell Dockett for this drive, guys. And Benford wears 97, and that looks painful from this vantage point. Well, and not something you want to see, because, again, Florida State, along that defensive front, with injuries and... and events off the field and folks terminating their career not just just doesn't have the bodies they used to up front there's William so the ball in, they trap the middle Bradley Jennings with his sixth tackle he missed the play by Darnell Williams a pickup of five against Florida State's senior captain its leading tackler entering this game and McPherson engineering now a second good looking run well one of the things you have to protect against when you get a big lead like Florida State had at the end of the is a little bit of complacency. Florida State has to continue to play with the intensity they demonstrated in the early part of the ball game. Stone, unable to make Rufus Brown miss as he weaves the uh, sideline. Plus, this is such an unconventional offense with which to prepare. You only spend, what, three days on the practice field against this? Yeah, you'll come in on Monday evening as you see them execute again, and Stone kind of dance and tiptoe down the sideline. Monday evening practice, kind of get the kinks out, go over a few things. Hard work on Tuesday and Wednesday, polish on Thursday. Once you get into the middle of the season, not a lot of time on the practice field to do weird and crazy things. Now, there's a lot of time on the play clock here, Keith, at 12, enabling McPherson to check the play, call it out. Again inside, running room for Williams. A flag on five catches, 92 yards, and then the, the trio of touchdown receptions. Talman Gardner, Javon Walker, B.J. Ward. Gardner with three receptions, 56 yards. Walker with two at 83. And B.J. Ward, as we mentioned, that first catch, 31 yards and a touchdown. If you're just joining us, the nine-time reigning Atlantic Coast Conference champion, Florida State Seminole. Return now to the field. They have lost once this year in ACC play, but the league race is far from over. Consider the fact that earlier today in Atlanta, Clemson upset Georgia Tech in overtime, 47 to 44. North Carolina won again, 17 to 9 over NC State. Virginia victorious at the expense of Duke, 31 to 10. And a Maryland outside the league. Maybe even better than advertised in Ralph Friedgen's return to his alma mater, 32 to 20, besting the West Virginia Mountaineers. There you, know, you see the updated statistics as we mentioned. Maryland atop, Virginia tied with them. North Carolina now at two and one. Florida State, if things hold the course, will improve to two and one. Bunching up at the top, you're not seeing Florida State run away with it as you have in the past. And again, Coach Bowden talking during the uh, Riders tour in August about how he felt like the ACC would be improved over last year. A lot of new blood, a lot of new offensive coordinators, some new head coaching. And uh, we're seeing some teams we don't historically all expect to win that many ball games doing real well. Uh, Bobby Bowden, his team, which is ranked in the top five in each of the last 14 years at season's end, took quite a tumble this week. All the way down to 15, and uh, here was Bobby's reaction on what a spill that was. Well, there's no doubt about it. We did have a big drop in the polls, a lot further than I thought. However, remember, we were on national television, and we didn't look good. So, I mean, that, the people that vote saw it, you know, so they put us way down there. That's fine. Uh, you got to, you know, our schedule allows us to go down there. We still got the number one team in the nation coming in here. And we're going to play the number two teams in the nation, you know, at the end of the year. So we got enough, and we got number seven team in the nation on our schedule. So we got plenty of people ahead of us. 
that if we could win, we would make a gradual climb back up. I'll bet you that whoever plays for a national championship this year will have at least one loss. John Stone on the return out to the 30 seven yard line and the number one team in the nation just so happens to be headed this way two weeks from today on the Miami Hurricanes it's a 37 yard return for John Stone and here comes the Demon Deacons who uh, concluded the first half with a long touchdown drive well done engineered by James McPherson and uh, he opened the game he'll start the second half he will start the second half and as you mentioned a great drive to close that second quarter Here's McPherson on the roll, throwing, and that's a tough catch across midfield by Fabian Davis, who kept that drive with a seven-yard touchdown. He takes a shot from Rufus Brown, and the linebacker, Bo Ware. Fabian Davis holds on the fifth complete pass tonight for McPherson. We've talked a lot about John Stone and his speed. We haven't mentioned Davis much until that last drive. He's actually the leading receiver for the Wake Forest team. And Deacons had 11 catches coming into tonight. They're slowly but surely getting him into the offensive game plan. The man that's been very quiet tonight in the game plan. Terrence Williams, second in the league in rushing when this day began. Second only to Maryland's sensational sophomore, Bruce Perry. It's Perry and Williams 1-2 in terms of uh, ground production in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Williams finishing, according to our stats, the first half with seven carries, just 12 yards. For number 12, all in that backfield. Davis started in motion, the pitch to Williams, and uh, Chris Hope, the senior captain, is out there to greet him. The free safety rolled right up to him and wrapped him up. Just a three yard gain on a something that is designed to go 12 or 15. Again, Florida State during halftime, they'll sit down, Chris Hope and company will go through the defensive scheme and the requirements that are necessary to play at home and stay at home against this option attack. Getting two to confer on third down, Davis on the move. Now work it inside. Now there are linemen that are capable up front for Wake Forest. We haven't talked about the Deeks offensive unit this evening very much, but Vince Azzolina, their senior center, number 53, with some push flanked by uh, a couple of other seniors, and Michael Collins, and Mike Mooseberger, the guard. So at the apex of that front, Azzolina and company, they played a lot of snaps. Azzolina with his 29th consecutive start for Wake Forest as well. He's a pretty good cook, we're told. Yes. Pick up a match of pasta and no time. Vince Azzolina over the football will be snapping it from the head of the person. Oh, hi, he juggles it, and his chase flag in. Flag in behind the quarterback in James McPherson. Azzolina with too much spice on that dish to his quarterback. He must be a disciple of Emerald. <laughs> Bang, pow. It was high. You'll see another look at it. Comes back hot and high. Good job by McPherson just to bring it in. Jackson misses on the outside. Bowler overruns, but plenty of Garnet jerseys behind him. Ten yards to three spot. The and the holding call tonight against Wake. This is their second holding infraction from Jim Grove's team. Now, Grove told us something interesting about his offensive lineman as you see the updated penalty statistics. He doesn't care to have those big 330, 350 pound monsters. He wants them to be in the 280 to 285 range and be quick. And that's the type of lineman you need in this offense where it's geared towards options and reading. Davis clear across the formation. They trap back to the near side, and there is running room for Williams against the grain. Good looking play there. Net seven. Tom, what do you got down on the field? Williams, the ball carrier. Hey, Paul, another injury for Florida State. Uh, Jeff Wommel, you can see walking around by here, right here. He has his whole left arm taped up. He's got a hyperextended left elbow. They're kind of taking a wait and see approach. In other words, if the game gets interesting, he could still go, but I know they'd like to keep him out. Tony Benford has been in next to Darnell Dockett for this drive, guys. And Benford wears 97, and that looks painful from this vantage point. Well, and not something you want to see, because again, Florida State, along that defensive front, and injuries and, and uh, events off the field, and folks terminating their career, not just, just doesn't have the bodies they used to up front. 
Derek Williams, the Benford ball carrier. They trapped the middle. Bradley Jennings with his sixth tackle. He missed the play by Terrence Darnell Williams. A pickup of five against Florida State's senior captain, its leading tackler entering this game. And McPherson engineering now a second good looking run. Well, one of the things you have to protect against when you get a big lead like Florida State had at the end of the second quarter and now opening up here the second half is a little bit of complacency. Florida State has to continue to play with the intensity they demonstrated in the early part of the ball game. Stone, unable to made Rufus John Brown Stone. miss as he weaves the uh, sideline. Plus, this is such an unconventional offense with which to prepare. You only spend, what, three days on the practice field against this? Yeah, you'll come in on Monday evening as you see them execute again and Stone kind of dance and tiptoe down the sideline. Monday evening practice, kind of get the kinks out, go over a few things. Hard work on Tuesday and Wednesday, polish on Thursday. Once you get into the middle of the season, not a lot of time on the practice field to do weird and crazy things. Now, there's a lot of time on the play clock here, Keith, at 12, enabling McPherson to check the play, call it out. Again inside, running room for Williams. A flag behind, however as he's blasted at the 15-yard line. The referee threw the flag. That's going to be holding, offensive holding. Kendall Pope, Bradley Jennings teamed on this tackle. You're right, it's coming back. The second penalty of this drive has Jim Grobe well onto the field. If it works once, we'll run it a second time. Almost an identical, if not identical, play. Grobe not happy with the call. Certainly he's got to be disappointed in the points on the scoreboard. But I'll tell you, Paul, got to be pleased with the productivity of his offense. That's Tom Zamorski, our referee. Well, the fact, too, that his team uh, trails at one point 42 to 7, puts a late first half touchdown on the board, and now is driving toward a potential uh, third score of this game. Their first drive, they've had it about three and a half minutes in Florida State territory. Little victory is rebuilding, succeeding Jim Caldwell. Again, we've seen him run the wide receivers, the speed that they have on this team outside. In this case, John Stone, Eric Moore. Uh, he lost five, however. Abdul Howard up. Howard's been active tonight. Kendall Pope, too. Watch Kendall in action. Pope and Howard will get the credit for the tackle. Great job by Alonzo Jackson, number 48. Pushes the big tackle. I think Tim Bennett right into the area that the ball carrier was trying to run through. And then Pope comes in to finish up. Big Zoe. 6'4", 255, out of America. They need 25 yards on this second down snap for the first pass. Play action. The handoff to Nick Bernie, throwing downfield, and it's overthrown. You have speed on the outside for Wake Forest in the form of their wide receiver, Ira Williams. The pass was too far. And Florida State was there as well in coverage. First time we've seen Bernie at the tailback position, the freshman. Pretty good arm, huh? A little trickery. Well, Bernie throws it. Ira Williams. Just a go route downfield. Too far for him. Now third and 25. And Person throws high, incomplete. Too hot for the hands of John Stone. Ricochet off his palms, and it's fourth down. McPherson has an arm. Yeah, dare I say it? Did he have hands of stone? Watch. This is uh, a bullet right there. Um, I, I think my comment stands. Coming up behind him, the, the freshman quarter, Brian McFadden. Looked like me trying to intercept. Jim McGladden, who recruited me, brought him to Florida State, said, I have hands like two by four. Now fourth down. And we remind you, the quarterback, McPherson, is also the punter. And he's going to pooch this. Just a quick kick. An offensive set. And this is a work of art. Inside the 10, down to the uh, eight yard line. And in case you think McPherson's only there for that type of trickery, averaged 49 yards a punt against Maryland last week. There was the ACC specialist of the week for his performance against the Terrapins. That is a 29 yard punt. Uh, very graceful down inside the 10-yard line. Another look at it. It just lines up short, much like the shotgun, and then pushes it to the outside. Gets down around the 20 and gets a forward roll. 
talk about it all the time. I don't have a golf shot like that in my bag. <laughs> Maybe a thudder. They're all power. Chris Ricks with a powerful performance in this game. Backed up now near his own goal line. Out comes Maddox. Change of direction. Little shiftiness. Gets outside. To the 15. May have run 30 to game five. Nick Maddox. Not only that, I think Nick's learned that when you turn back inside, once you get past the line of scrimmage, those defensive linemen are in pursuit. Good bounce outside here, gets away from another would-be tackler, and then he runs back inside, and hello. Big night tonight for Nick Maddox. Two touchdowns, closing in on 100 yards for the first time this season, 82 in all. And uh, by the looks of things, Wake is sitting in weight on him this time. Tom, the timber right now, the uh, the tenor of the Seminole sideline here midway through the third. It's been pretty solid all game, Paul. I hate to keep being the bearer, bad, but the fullback situation, obviously we knew Randy Golightly was out with an Achilles problem, but William McCray in his ankle. They're saying that he'll play here in the second half. Greg Tony, his backup has a back strain, and he won't play at all, and that's why we've seen so much of Chad Mater in this football game, guys. I think Golightly with that Achilles injury that's cost him the first third of the season, the Tallahassee sophomore. Had a great spring camp, uh, spring game and, and fall camp. This is old hat for the freshman B.J. Ward, the Dallas, Texas native. First career catch turned into a touchdown. Now he has a second wrap on that gold helmet from the quarterback. Well, and you see again, as we commented in the first half, a, a maturing of a young quarterback. Nice read on the slant here. Step, deliver the ball. Nothing fancy, but the important little things that you have to do in order to be successful. Game of 11 earns the first down. Ricks closing in on 300 yards passing. We have six more. <laughs> and a long shove to the sideline, Atrius Bell. Atrius Bell tonight with six receptions in this game. So he's coming out of it. He has more catches in this game this evening, Keith, than he had the first three weeks of the season. Florida State utilizing the forward pass very, very effectively. Chris, 277 yards, 13 of 17, and three TD. At a side with a flag in behind it. Dropped by Nate Bowling, the outstanding senior from Swenton, Ohio. Bowling described as the quickest of the three down linemen. That is a change. They'll decline this penalty, take the play. Bowling uh, on the left side, technically known as the left end. They run two ends and a nose, three down. Third down. Works right up the middle. And brings down Chris Rick. His first sack, but he is credited with 26 now. Career tackles for a loss is Bowling. And no Demon Deacon spends more time operating in the opponent's backfield, that does the 285-pound Nate Bowling using the top 10 in career tackles for loss for Wade. Overshadowed in what have been seasons of struggle has been his very solid play. Nice pass. Right down the middle of the field for the first down to Gardner, rather, P.K. B.J. B.J. Ward, 41-yard line. You're going to have to get Atrus and Javon some first initials of some type. Well, you got... P.K. and now B.J. and A. True. And that's standing here by Chris Ricks. Feels the pressure up the middle, ignores it. Delivers on the little skinny post there. Ground level look. Nice step and delivery right on target. So he is connected for gains in this outing, Keith. He has four and all of better than 30 yards. Make that five, six and all of better than 30 yards. That Illegal substance substitution. Against the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat first down. Some of those breaking the huddle with 12. But a 34-yard gain for Ricks on a call by Jeff Bowden. A 52-yard gain, a couple of 32s, a 41. A big play performance by Chris Ricks to a variety of receivers tonight. And with his first career 300-yard passing game as he sits at 301. Five receivers at all have caught passes from Chris. He scoops, he tucks, and he'll take the hit up at the 41-yard line, again by Bowling, who chased him a long way. 
when we spoke with Chris yesterday, one of the first things he did, I think you had left the room, first thing as you see Bowling make his way off is he was busting my chops, going all the way back to the Duke ball game because I had commented on his, his flip there. And that's the type of intensity that Chris has. And I enjoyed visiting with him. He uh, winked at me, gave me a little shrug, and said, uh, you know, I just had to get you on that one. Well, he's only get, he's only going to get bigger and stronger, obviously wiser, too. So project him in a couple of seasons what he's going to be. Uh, project him into the second half of this year. We're into the second half of this game as he throws for Javon again to the 30-yard line. That is a big play combination tonight of freshman in Rick's to a senior captain in Javon Walker here for 28. And this is another thing that Coach Bowden and the quarterback coach Daryl Dickey would like to see from Chris. Come in on the beginning of the second half and pick up right where you left off in terms of tempo, in terms of your ability to read defenses, in terms of the execution of those things which you need to do in order to be successful. Don't, don't sit back on your laurels, sit back on that 42 point performance, but come right back out and continue to execute. They gash the middle here good, the 14th carry of the night for a very busy Nick Maddox. Now over 80 yards rushing tonight. With the Seminoles headed toward what would be their third victory of the year, their second in the Atlantic Coast Conference. Give him five. Breaking free on second effort. Close to that first down. That's a tough run right there. Well, they needed to reach the 21 for the first down. But a yard shot where his knee touched. Big Montre Holland up front. Todd Williams over on that side. Atrus Bell coming in to mix it up a little bit. Turns back inside. It's another two or three just on his own. And this drive continues. The began inside the Seminole 10-yard line, we'll remind you, following that uh, outstanding punt by McPherson. Off the quick kick. Nick Slithers. Not much. And Paul, that was third and short. And you saw Chris Ricks apparently change the play at the line of scrimmage. Something you don't, something you don't expect, or even sometimes allow your freshman quarterback to do. Well, they they didn't allow him to do that at the outset of the year. And again, you see him getting his hands, and uh -huh. getting his arms around this offense, more confidence, giving him more latitude, and he's performing well within those parameters. A fresh set of downs at the 20, hunting his fourth touchdown pass of the night. Chris Gons, Walker had it go right through his hand. In zone in traffic. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, for he had those gray mitts on the football. A lot of people around there. I'm not sure if someone else got their hands on the football. And uh, he was able to get it through traffic. This is Talman Garner, Garner who's running underneath, and then behind him will be Walker. And I don't think anybody touched it. I think Javon might have had the ball obscured from his vision, but it hit him near the, or on the hands. An eye set, Maddox driven right back. Marquise Hopkins and uh, Kellen Brantley. And then this is Marquise Hopkins on this stop. His eighth tackle of this game for the Fayetteville Senior. You see Maddox getting a little tired. He's seeing a lot of action. Talk about Hopkins, he led the team in tackles last year. And he and Brantley are number one and number two this campaign. So Sam and Will, linebacker, you used to call him third and 11 for Florida State. All right, it's the three-man pass rush. This ought to give Ricks all the time in the world, and it does for the first time. Coleman Gardner to the five-yard line. First and goal, Florida State. That is 17 more. For Chris Ricks. Isolation and action, post route. They didn't rush three, Paul. They rushed two. The nose tackle dropped back in zone coverage. That's how Gardner was able to get over. Nine people in coverage, and Rick still found Gardner. First and goal for Florida State. Closing it on 50 points tonight. 
Maddox hunting a third touchdown is stoned. The flag in behind him on solid corner play from Quentin Williams. Nice job by Williams that time to come up and stop Nick Maddox Ooh. dead. Florida State's going to get a holding call here. That'll back him up quite a bit. You go from the 5 to the 15. Florida State. What's been a uh, penalty-free night for the most part? This will only be the fourth flag tonight against Florida State in the wake of 14 penalties that were stepped off against the Seminoles in Chapel Hill last Saturday. Holding against the offense. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. In our meeting with Coach Bowden yesterday, Paul, as you and I were talking, you know, we kind of asked him, I said, what's the one thing you want to have happen tomorrow, today, Saturday? He says execution. And for him, execution means two things. Number one, no penalties. Number two, no turnovers. The two things that killed Florida State, you see Jimmy Higgins there, the offensive line coach, killed Florida State up in Durham last week. And then Antoine Marambo, the center for Josh Baggs, has replaced him, a new center in the game. The high snap, the inside handoff to Greg Jones, going Watch back out. the other way. Still on his feet to the 10, the 5, touchdown Florida State. What a run by Greg Jones. Greg Jones with his second touchdown of this football game. That high snap threw off the timing, and he improvised. The play broke down. Greg Jones took off the score for a second time. If you were designing that play, you'd run out of ink with your pen in the playbook. Just great instinct. Sabayet Bechia. That hit the upright and comes back at him. Remember, yet last week he hit the upright and it went inside for good. This time it hits the upright and Florida State does not convert the point after a 10. Florida State jumps ahead. First score of the second half, 48-14 at Wake. We'll be back in a minute. Florida State football on Sunshine is brought to you by Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. Seminole football famous for offense. Greg Jones adding to that tradition tonight with his second touchdown run. 48-14. A 91-yard drive, the longest of the year, that consumed 16 plays. Jesse Stein with his strong right leg consistently has sent Stone backpedaling into his own end zone. Pause in the action. Florida State big. Two plays run by Wake Forest up to near midfield and a penalty marker in as Florida State has just expanded its lead to 48-14. And this is against the Seminoles. After the play, personal foul against the defense, 15 yards from the end of the run, automatic first down. When the person comes out and hits Jason Alexander on the first play, picks up about 12, then they come behind that with a run right up the middle to Staten. Picks up another 10 or 11, and then a late hit there on Florida State moves him another 15. McPherson back the other way. Incomplete intended for Jason Anderson. No flag coming. Stanford Samuels was over there covering on him. He's the man that took over for Tay Cody. All Tay Cody has done in the graduating class of a year ago is earned a starting berth with the San Diego Chargers. And has how many picks? Two. In? Two games. Big shoes to fill for Stanford Samuels, and he's filling them very well. He continues to battle thumb problems that he's uh, had. At the... This will be against uh, Wake Forest. Stanford Samuels sore thumbs through, throughout the season at his first interception last week. Here again, Tom on the sidelines. Paul, you guys have been talking about McPherson for Wake Forest. Well, McPherson for Florida State has been limbering up for the last several minutes after that last touchdown. I would assume he'll be in the ball game next time FSU gets the ball. Yeah, one's an Irish pronunciation, the other a Scottish girl. He's a stone on the end around. Great pass, Kendall Pope almost. Both linebacker again, stay where he's supposed to be <laughs> to save the day. But Kendall going to be going back to the huddle going, man, that guy can fly. Kendall had a nice angle on him. 
and he just runs right around him. What great speed. Great effort by Pope to get him out of bounds, but what great speed by Stone. They put the ball in his hands a lot. I mean, do you blame him? You know, rushing the football. He's carried the ball seven times and gained 66 yards. He's caught but one pass tonight. McPherson. Throw in. High. Oh, Intercepted. What a shot laid out by Rufus Brown on Fabian Davis. Rufus Brown led him up. A brown out of Davis. This will get some oohs and ahs during the film session, and rightfully so. Good pressure forces McPherson a little wider than he wants. He lays this ball up, and Davis goes up off of his feet and gets absolutely nailed. That ball very nearly intercepted. It went up so high into the air. Another look at it here. Very clean and legal play. There's the ball up in the air. Several folks close to it, but no one can catch it before it hits the ground. On fourth down. Floated into traffic. A flag is in behind the play on what appears to be a first down reception by Jason Anderson. Back through traffic. They'll tack on a few more yards for this. This would be roughing the passer. Thrown by that man, the referee Tom Zamorski. That's right. Standing right there when it appeared that McPherson was hit not once but twice in his backfield. Tail end of it right here. Floater ball, three seminal defenders around there. Nice job by Anderson, knows where he is. Tail end of the play if we get it. Right there, two Florida State defenders hitting quarterback McPherson. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Against the defense, half the distance to the goal on the end of the run, automatic first down. McPherson with a 13-yard completion, which will stand against Mickey's defense. With the headsets, that's Joe Kimes to your left, Mickey Andrews in the middle, and just out of the picture is Odell Hagan. This coaching staff does not like to give up points in any fashion to anybody at any time for any reason. First and goal. Tough running between the tackles for Wake Forest late here in the third. Uh, a Wake Forest team that came in here is one of the league's better ground clubs. Running the football, they have been uh, limited to only 16 yards on the ground tonight. Here at Doak Campbell Stadium, the Seminoles playing well at home, backed by this huge crowd on a lovely Saturday night. Chris Dillon. Trying to get a block at the 10. Nothing. Jason Anderson looked to throw a block. Stanford Samuels came up from the corner to knock down Stone. Florida State defensively doing a much better job of reading this play. Watch Pope's fly, knowing that it's coming around. You see a Bill Howard flying up there, Pope over there, and as you mentioned, number 10, Stanford Samuels, with a good tackle. His hands all taped up. Both thumbs have been pulled out of their sockets. So every time he makes a stop, there's a throbbing ball. The trap inside Williams, who cuts it back to the four-yard line, setting up fourth and goal from the four. Bradley Jennings with his tackle. Oh, boy. I believe that'll be the last play of the third quarter, so some Florida State fans will get a better look down at the other end zone. Come to the end of the third quarter of Florida State with a solid effort at home tonight, a dominating performance, and leading 48 to 14. Call 
has his own number, dropped in the backfield for a loss. Again, it's Kendall Polk. A spectacular game tonight by the sophomore linebackers. Two interceptions, seven stops by our count, and now finally, to the fourth quarter, traditional salute again, twice in one game. So that's the fourth quarter of the second time. And the fourth quarter redo, 48-14, FSU. Nation's longest winning streak on the line when this game began. Florida State now cruising toward what would be its 37th consecutive win at home. And Adrian McPherson enters the game at quarterback, and he's thrown out of his own end zone. Deep downfield for Javon Walker, who can't make the catch at midfield. Adrian McPherson heaved that to the freshman quarterback. 55 yards in the air for the senior in Walker. What a difference a week makes. Last week, Florida State backed up a couple of times early in the UNC ball game and throwing the ball out of the end zone now. They didn't last week, they are now. Chris Ricks, three touchdown passes tonight, 345 yards through the air. He connected with a 52-yard strike to Javon Walker. Greg Jones with a couple of scores, pounds it out of there. Here again, Tom. And Paul, one key injury. The good news for Florida State, they stopped Wake Forest on that fourth down. The bad news, Zoe Jackson came limping off in immense pain, and they're working on his right knee. I mean, the defensive line has taken hit after hit. Alonzo Jackson, the latest uh, in the line, will cross our fingers. You've got to hope, Tommy, that that is a sprain as opposed to a tear. Tom Haney there was looking at it. Now the trainers are flying ice. And never a good sight at any time for a football player. On third down, A.D. out of his own end zone. Throws it, if that's intentional grounding, and it is, it's that's a safety. safety for Wake Forest. Tack two more, and a Wake Forest tally. And it's 48-16 now, the safety off intentional grounding by Adrian McPherson. Intentional grounding against the offense. That's lost it down from the spot of the foul, the result of the play, or safety. And Wake Forest will get the football right back following a free kick. So this is the danger, obviously, of throwing the ball out of the end zone. Nowhere for AD to go as they come in with a little blitz. And he's trying to throw the ball away. And as you mentioned, by rule, if it's ruled intentional grounding from the end zone, it's an automatic safety. And on the phone upstairs, Daryl Dickey, his quarterback coach, who sits upstairs, the other assistant coaches in the uh, Seminole coaching box, Jeff Bowden on the sideline, electing to direct the fortunes from down there. And a lot of people questioning Jeff and, and, and Coach Bowden about that, but Jeff more comfortable down on the sidelines where he spent all of his career trying to be named the offensive coordinator. Dickey upstairs, and of course, a number of the defensive coaches are downstairs, and Hines and Mick Andrews and Odell Hagan. Spotters upstairs relaying information down so that the coaches on the field can make the calls and get it into the players. So McPherson, the young freshman from Southeast High School in Bradenton, Florida, sacked or nearly sacked at his own end zone, throws it away. And uh, Wake Forest not only scores, but again following the safety has the football right back in its possession. And an opportunity uh, truly to clean the score up a bit for the Sunday morning papers. And to improve over the final 15 minutes of football. Stone, right for the seven hole. Here we go, that's Fabian Davis. Davis to the 30, and it's Gwaltney, the punter, who has to help out on the tackle. First down, Wake, at the Seminole 26-yard line. Fabian Davis, Jets on the return. The All the other way to the 26. The other thing that this does, excuse me, Paul, is it, it does demoralize your defense a little bit. They do a good job of holding Wake Forest. The offense goes in, and certainly they were backed up under difficult circumstances. They give up two points, and now you have the kickoff, and you've got to go right back out there and stop this offense again. Storm run out of bounds by Abdul Howard. 
That was a 56-yard return off the free John kick. Defensive play by Abdul Howard. Now Stone, very busy tonight. I'm impressed with his toughness. You talked about him being a track performer, and then there's the old knock the guy is fast but not tough. Pretty rugged football player. Well, and again, Coach Jim Grove told us he's, he's really a football player that runs track as opposed to a track or sprinter person who tried to play football. He's rushed for 67 yards tonight. In motion to the far side. Anthony Young throws underneath. And the catch is made by Ella Williams near the first down. After all, Howard was there. They gained seven on the play. First catch for Ira Williams in this football game. Again, you see the importance of the defensive coaching staff from Florida State places on giving up points. Here we are in the fourth quarter of a blowout. First team defense is in there. Nice delivery again right to Williams. First team defense is in there trying to prevent the score. Inside a handoff, hard running for Fred Staten to the nine-yard line and a first down. For Wake Forest, the Dean Bacon. And if you're familiar with Wake football, you know that there have been lean years, a bowl game a couple of years ago, and a victory over Arizona State in Hawaii, the Aloha Bowl. But in Jim Caldwell's seasons there, just that one winning year. Much to be improved on, but there are signs of progress. Here is Staten. Driving in for a touchdown. Wake's third of this game. And a gaping hole up the middle for Fred Staten, the sophomore running back from Charlotte. Again, Wake not doing anything fancy, going right back to the heart of this Florida State defense. Straight up the middle goes Staten. Staten with the touchdown. His first of the season for the sophomore. Another track guy, too, that Wake has recruited. A 100-meter champion in North Carolina. In his prep years, his high school years, they've taken his weight down. He was much bigger at about 230 pounds. He's just over 200 now and is, and is quicker for the Demon Deacon coaching staff. More of what they want. Exactly. And again, this misdirection option oriented offense relies much more on quickness than it does on group strength or group power following the uh, two-point conversion here they are going to go for two or not the uh, two-point conversion rather the safety they'll go for two and the pitch on the wing for stone for the pylon he pushed the ball it appeared over the pylon but it's ruled out of bounds on the sideline run out of bounds by kindle pope Get close to reaching the ball over the plane of the goal line. Be interesting. Maybe we'll get a look at it when we come back to see whether he actually got there. Here's another look at it as we go to commercial. Keep your eye on the football. All he has to do is get it across the pylon. And that's uh, that's a good conversion from where it looks here. <laughs> Florida stayed up by a bunch, but Wake not dying. 48-22. Florida State leads Wake Forest. Early in the third quarter, but Wake has put eight on the board in this stanza. A safety of uh, Adrian McPherson, following a nice return by Fabian Davis. Fred Staten's touchdown run, so Jim Grove's team continues to battle. And that's the one thing as he leaves here potentially is on a losing end, even up the record two and two. That's the one thing he will take away from here. His kids did not quit. Profonso Thornton. On one knee. Where's Crow Thorpe been tonight? We, we have not seen him, but we've seen plenty of Atrus and, yeah. and uh, BJ and Javon. In the uh, rotation between Bell and Gardner and Walker. There's only one football that go around. And Greg Jones, a couple of touchdowns. Seminole fans can tune into Sunshine Network Tuesday night for women's volleyball. Your Seminoles host the Miami Hurricanes. This is Cecile Renault's 26th season. The Lady Seminoles head coach, match time set for 7.30 live on Sunshine. First in Florida sports. What about great coaches? Without a doubt. Still we know, it's been over a quarter century. Stiff arm for Greg Jones. He keeps his balance and earns himself 12 more yards after the initial hit in the flat. 
Good job of hard running there. Ricky Perez finished him off. Tell you what, Greg may not have that sprinter speed out of his first step, but once he gets moving up field, he does have great speed and great balance. You see him put that hand down and, as you mentioned, pick up another 10 or 12 yards just on effort. So Chris Ricks, one of the top 20 passing performances in the history of Doak Campbell Stadium. Replaced tonight by Adrian McPherson, who comes out winging here. A little bit too much on that for A. Trues Bell. Bell this evening, and a busy young man, wide receiver with six receptions, four yards shy of 100 in this game. Lest you think A.D. cannot throw the football, the first ever Mr. Football and Mr. Basketball in the same academic year. We've mentioned this before, 3,727 yards passing this senior year. Down in Bradenton. Seminoles with more than 500 yards of total offense. Moments ago, picking that up on Greg Great Jones. On the carry. Crossing the 500-yard threshold. Tariq White on the stop here. Florida State, since it's joined the Atlantic Coast Conference, have won the last the nine meetings. The 10th with White. Wake's last win in this rivalry, way back in 1973. Last win, in, last win in Tallahassee was in 1959, the year I was born. You said that's your sophomore year. No, don't even, don't even go there. Third down for McPherson. Blitz on against him. Pressure coming. He's going to try and stumble out of there up to the 39-yard line. Not nearly enough for a first down. And of the punting unit. Who's this? Who's that? Who's that? I haven't seen this well, guy. We haven't seen Gwaltney's first kick of this game. He didn't have any in the first half. Did he? Has he punted in the second? Well, here is. Uh, no, he hasn't. First kick of the night. 11:20 to go. Puts his foot into it and hits it a ton. My goodness. John Stone. Rather picky and Davis. Davis a flag in behind him. A flag already thrown in up to the 25-yard line. Kyler Hall on this tackle. Now let's sort out the penalty mark here. It was thrown right at where he caught the football. As Thomas Zamorski's being told. It's a 55-yard punt, and Florida State apparently was within the halo, the two-yard halo that protects return men. And uh, a bad picture there, unfortunately. During the, the return, lock in the back. Against the return team, team. half the distance to the goal, goal. First, down. first down. Well, the first signal was not blocking the back, but rather interference. That is not good. No, and, and you can see it's already been braced. And he heads off. Tom, hand the report for you. Now to the six-yard line, the ball is spotted. Come off its goal line with 11 minutes to go. Nothing inside. Tom, it's been a season of injuries so far for Florida State fans. It really has been. And uh, an update on Zoe Jackson, they're calling that a sprained MCL right now. We'll just have to wait the MRI. This guy has a torn ACL. Robert Morgan, wide receiver. I know it's been tough for you. Give us After an update the play, on, on how your rehab foul. is coming right now. Right now, I mean, I'm like five weeks into the surgery. It's been going well. A couple of days. I can feel a little soreness coming back because I've been working hard in the training room, but everything coming along real fine. The Florida State receiving corps has obviously missed yourself and also Anquan Bolden, but tonight they've stepped up. Javon Walker, now a co-captain, has played big, and B.J. Ward got in the mix. Your thoughts on the way the receiving corps progressed a little bit tonight? Definitely. Last week was like definitely a time for everybody to really take their game to another level. And I mean, tonight, I mean, the scoreboard is showing that they really worked hard in practice and they took it to another level this week. I don't want to leave out Talman either. I mean, he came in with all the hype in the world and been slow to live up to it, but this year he's been living up to it. He's been making plays all last year, and definitely this year he stepped it up. With all the injuries we done had, a lot of young guys coming through for us, and fortunately we were able to be up the way we are this early and it gets late in the game, Rob. How tough is this for you? How tough is it? Uh, it's tough, man. 
You'll be back next year? Oh, yeah, definitely. I'll be back. All right, he's, he's got a red shirt here. A foul, roughing the passer against the defense, 15 yards to the end of the run, automatic first down. So that 45-yard connection to John Stone. You add 15 more to that. And that's a 60-yard gain on this play. And uh, Wake Forest again in the red zone. Stone got right behind Janeiro Jackson. Fortunately, Bryant McFadden was able to come over with an angle because I don't think there's anybody back there that could catch him if he had a step on him. That'll push Wake's offensive output to nearly 400 yards. Alan Augustine wrapping up Terrence Williams. That would be cause for concern, quite honestly, because Wake's had a share, enjoyed a share of big plays in this game, including Anthony Young's 71-yard touchdown run. The other quarterback, McPherson, has mounted three solid drives as well against Florida State. Whether it's the second unit or the first unit, it doesn't matter. This is a team Florida State was supposed to dominate, and they're closing it up 400 yards. The good news about that is if you score 48 points, more times than not, you'll still win. McPherson for David. And shielded to the sideline by Stanford Samuel. Bobby Bowden saying that uh, he, he pointed the finger at the defense last week in North Carolina. He said the, the offense, and this was somewhat uh, kiddingly and, and tongue in cheek, when the offense scored nine points. If there have been years, that'd be good enough to win. But yeah, he said sometimes we'd win nine to seven. There were Joe Kynes alongside Mickey Andrews there. But Bowden saying that uh, you know, so many people have pointed their finger at, at Mark Rick, or pardon me, at Chris Ricks, but Mark God, it was right on the defense that he thought that you could lay a lot of the blame on a week ago. McPherson, power move, ball win. Oh, and he rushed to force the interception. You better catch him. There we go, ball win. All the way down to the 30, the 20, the 10 5. Touchdown, FSU. 85 yards. I remember Michael Bulware came to Florida State as a receiver. There's a little bit of a reason why. Now, before we get too excited, it's been pointed out, we do have a flag back at the 43-yard line. This would be the third interception of the game. And Bulware's very first of the season. It'll be coming back, though. The interception may stand. The touchdown will not. Still look good. Big heat coming on during the return, blocking the back against Florida State. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. And in flow with players changing direction, this will happen. The play caused by pressure up front. Big, big rush there. Charles Howard. By Charles Howard, who's been slowed most of the year, throws the ball right to Bowlware. Penalty right there on the left-hand side. Bradley Jennings getting a good shot on McPherson, but watch the stride on this linebacker. Now he's pulling away from a running back in Terrence Williams. But uh, what stands is Bulware with his first interception. Yeah, he's explaining it over there. You're gonna lose that battle, monster. But good job defense. Came up with the interception. Okay, coach, I know. Down. 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 Nick Maddox doing their best to get him 100 yards in this football game this evening. Prior to that, he had 19 points, six yards shy, and has yet to produce through now into the fourth week of the season to beat the 100 yard rushing game. I'm not so sure, Paul, that particularly this year the focus is on a 100 yard rushing game from a single tailback because you've got Greg Jones and you've got Eric Shelton behind them. Unlike Travis Minor last year when he wanted to make sure you got him 100. McPherson cocks and unloads. Go to that. Uh, Coleman Gardner able to make the catch at midfield. In front of Ricky Perez. The ball floated somewhat on Adrian McPherson. Was in the air a while. That sideline route for Tom Gardner. Pick pickup. We're looking to your left. Isolation play action. Got to be impressed and got to congratulate Jeff Bowden and his receiver corps. They've really come back ball from just a terrible outing. Six 
officially dropped balls by receivers, backs, and tight ends against UNC. I don't recall a single drop tonight. Fifth catch for Gardner. And Pearson off play action. Airs this one out deep. And a 10-yard line incomplete for A. Trues Bell. Being covered by a freshman in Marcus Magruder. A terrific first three weeks, four weeks now for Marcus Magruder's uh, career. A rookie of the week honor earned from the ACC. He leads him in interceptions this year and can fly. He has two picks through the first three ball games. This ball very nearly caught by Adrian. The crowd thinking there should have been pass interference. I can't see it. Look like good coverage by the young corner. He's from Fairburn, Georgia. He's Marcus Magruder. Second down at midfield. Pressure coming. McPherson stayed on his feet. Dropped this time back at the 36, and the game deteriorates because a flag is thrown in by the umpire after the play. And guess what this is? Roderick Steven left in, hit McPherson. He got away, and it appears to be against Florida State, and yes, holding. Worst thing you can hear from Florida State if you're at home. White captain, white captain. We'll decline this, said the Dean of Eagles. Holding, holding. Against the offense, the penalties refused, third down. Now the benefit of this is a lot of men up front, second unit players on that offensive line are getting most important reps for Jeff Bowden. He'll have an open date prior to the next opponent, which is, of course, here. It is the top team in the nation and one of America's premier rivalries, the Miami Hurricanes. A hurricane warning over to Kansas And how good State. did they look Thursday night after, what, a three-week layoff? Yeah, they are 3-0 and on the year. They play next Saturday against Troy State from Alabama. An arching pass from McPherson. And nearly picked off by Perez. Perez turned the wrong way. Pro Thorpe was the intended target. Dan Field, the kicking unit is on. Isolation action. You see Pro is going to work inside and then push back outside. Actually cuts back inside. Maybe should have stayed outside. I think McPherson thought that he would be looking over his outside shoulder, or at least on the outer part of the field, looking yeah, back into it. Perez set to try and block this kick by Chance Gwaltney. His first effort, 55 yards. Lord Fabian Davis here. Davis makes the catch. And uh, takes the kicking at the 30-yard line. Eric Sheldon, special teams coverage for Florida State, a 42-yard kick. A nice 13-yard return by Fabian Davis with 7.53 remaining in the football game. For Wake Forest, they jet home after this one this evening. Next Saturday, they host Chuckamata and NC State. Wake is going to win more than two football games this season in the ACC. Wouldn't you feel? I would think so, without a doubt. A lot of new faces in there for Florida State now. Wake two, this is Nick Burney, second snap. Okay, a sophomore from Glen Allen, Virginia. Spent time at Fort Union Military Academy. Stop was made by Marcella Church. Former and Tony Benford. High School Player of the Year. Glen Allen. Sophomore in the backfield. Here comes John Stone, who's locked a lot of time in motion tonight. Anthony Young grew up in North Augusta, South Carolina, the Wake's quarterback. He used to work during the Masters Championships in Augusta in the clubhouse. He's met every golfer in the world, from Tiger to O'Mara, you name them. He's met them. How does he play? Well, I don't. That's a great question. Because I'd like to take some lessons. Maybe some of the folks. I hope it rubbed off. I was going to say rubbed off. On the next year, rubs it off with the stone. Stone will be sleeping on that play tonight. Front yes, of the sideline, my church. Got to be proud of his effort, both in terms of what he's done and the numbers he's piled up. His option attack is just so difficult to defend. It's going to get its yards. I remember we used to play option teams in the late 70s. We said we've got to keep them between the 20s, Paul. They may run up a lot of yardage, but we just got to keep them out of the end zone. He's pretty battered right now, Keith. He checks out for a moment. Anthony Young the other way. Slings it downfield, and he 
overshot Fabian Davis, who was running free at the 25-yard line. You've got youngsters back there. That number 57 is Robert May. Number 41 for Florida State is Tyler Hall. So you've got the uh, young kids back there. Obviously, they're not going to be as polished and as disciplined as the older guys. And very nearly caught wide open. Bernie again. Six and a half minutes to play. And a 48 to 22 football game. Ryan Ross, number 71 in there for Florida State on the tackle. Another one of the young kids getting some playing time. Florida State well down the depth chart here uh, against Jim Crow's football team. Everybody plays the evening for Florida State, which will post its third victory of the season and its second in the Atlantic Coast Conference. And as Bobby Bowden told his team following uh, the setback at North Carolina, you have to win your next two games, two games, uh, to go as high as you can. You'll know at the end of those two games how high you may fly this year. And of course, that second game where he couldn't mention it by name, with the hurricane. Jason Anderson on the slant route. We tried to coax him into talking about Miami in his office yesterday. Nothing to do. The only thing he admitted to is he did have a couple of videotapes of uh, Miami over on his bookcase beside his TV. He said, I'll probably get to those right after. Wait for it. I said, Coach, you, you know what's going on with Joe Paterno in Penn State? He says, you know, I just happen to have a Penn State tape right here. And I, and I said, who are they playing, Coach? <laughs> oh, that's, that's coincidental. It just happened to be Miami. It just happened to be Miami. Miami, my foot. Arrow get Marcella Church following the game at about eight. So important reps for these young players. These, not only to show coaches what they can do on video, but this is their game action. It means a lot to them. And Nick Burney coats it close to the 30-yard line. Trying to get better with every snap. Robert May on this tackle for Florida State. Some progress this week for Mickey Andrews, would you say? Progress, but you cannot be pleased with the yardage and the points. Fabian Davis running free. Incomplete at the five-yard line. Larry Coker takes a look at this. Which tape does he evaluate to indicate how good these Seminoles can be or or? Or well, we'll greet him here in two weeks. As, as smart as Coker is, of course, he's been involved in this Miami FSU series for a number of years. I think he, he takes the UNC tape and throws it away. He goes back and looks at Duke, UAB, and Wake to get a better feel for this Florida State football team. So the highs, this is Davis with a blocker inside the 25. You can bet the Miami staff watching with you this evening. Miami players as well. Off to a perfect start at three and all. The nation's number one ranked team idle this evening. They won at Pittsburgh's new stadium Thursday night. Now uh, play Troy State in a week. Florida winner today of future FSU opponent, of course. Georgia Tech upset by the other Bowden to hit coach. Uh, in this family in overtime, Tommy gets a win. And Grant Hill in Atlanta following his upset loss against Virginia. That was a, a kind of a very, not shocking, but disappointing loss. Virginia going into Clemson, beating them at home. You had to imagine that Tommy's team would be a little fired up like Dad's was. Neither, I should say, none of the Bowdens like losing. Wake Forest needs a yard, and they'll get it. Agility on the part of Nick Burney. His initial hold was filled. So he shuffled to his right and slithered for that first down to the 20-yard line. Got a flag on the far side. Right along the line of scrimmage. Before the snap, ball start. That's the offense. And back it comes. Still fourth down. 
the positive points that Jim could take out of this game today? Well, number one, 22 points. Number two, 440 yards and still counting of total offense. I think you've got to be most pleased with what the offense was able to do against an ever-improving Florida State defense. Still with ample time on the play clock, 10 seconds. A sophomore from South Carolina. In Young looks for a hole on fourth down. Cannot find one. The defense holds on. The football will go over following the Allen Augustine tackle on down. 2.53 away from the finish line. Adrian McPherson out to the 20 yard line with just over two minutes remaining in this football game. Our thanks to Dave Hart, the director of athletics at Florida State, and to Rob Wilson, the sports information office. Doug Puritan, and all their assistants with this telecast, to Rod Wellman, the athletic director at Wake Forest, Dave Puckett, the sports information office, for his help in the preparation of our Sunshine Network telecast tonight of Wake Forest and Florida State. Always a pleasure to come to Doak. And Doak was filled tonight, the marching Chiefs, a picture of perfection, and Florida State's offense gelled from the outset. Adrian McPherson unloads downfield and he overshoots an open Nick Maddox. Still in the game with 124 to play. Standing free at midfield. Well, that's just the case of having too much gunpowder in that shell. Well, they put, I, that rifle arm was just a little too much. Keith, they have the number one offensive unit out there with Adrian McPherson. See, back to the sideline, like Milford Brown, the junior. A split guard, maybe to, to, to get the better players out there with him. Just getting him some reps, getting him used to working with the ones in case he has to come in and actually do it. Quote from his 10, it's blocked. It rolls close to being out of the end zone and in fact is a safety. Wake cannot down it in the end zone the first time this year. Quote has had a punt block, another safety, the second of the game recorded by Wake on the block kick by Jamie Scott. The last time you saw Florida State give up two safeties in a ball game. Right. Comes right up the middle. First. Little stunt, little twist. Gets his right hand on it. Now if he just settles and, and doesn't try to fall on this football, it's a touchdown. That ball had settled right there. All he had to do was stop it, touch it with his hand and pick it up. Oh, Joe Kimes and Walton face to face. Wake Forest has outscored Florida State in the fourth quarter, registering two safeties and a touchdown. Chance Gwaltney's punt blocked out of the end zone. Uh, he'll have to kick it again, a free kick, the second of this quarter. Fabian Davis off his 20-yard line. Up to the 35 and no further, and a late penalty marker in. Tackle by Claudius Jose. Fabian Davis on the run back. Davis was rocked pretty good. Stop was made by Eric Moore and Claudius Jose. Another positive, I guess, for Jim Grove, certainly the fact that in the fourth quarter, all the points belong to the Demon Deacons. With one twelve to go. You've got to be pleased with, with Coach Grove's team's effort. Turn block the back. It's a return team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, or from the end of the run. First down. Things getting a little, a little sloppy at the tail end. Uh, for Wake tonight, it's 12th, make that it's 11th penalty of this game. And uh, Mickey trying to get uh, some inspiration. This play, fire, keep it's an a edge. 60 minute ball game. You don't ever quit. Pressure from the backside, able to drop. Anthony Young, it's Eric Moore off the edge. The freshman defensive end. Eric Moore expected to redshirt this year, but with the accident of Eric Powell moved into a rotation. You'll see a little bit of the reason why they like this kid. 6'4", 280, 285 pounds. 
towards his first career stack. Excuse me, 225 pounds. I've got him bigger than he needs to be. And a game tackle there, and, and Eric's on it. Big enough is the ball carrier. From Hokie, Florida. His first action as a freshman came a week ago in Chapel Hill. In there late in this one, might be the final play of the game. As a Florida State will win for the third time this season. Wake Forest has dropped its second game in as many weeks, both within the Atlantic Coast Conference. Chris Ricks, brilliant tonight at the outset, passing for 345 yards and three touchdowns. And for Bobby Dodd's career win, 318. Moving up that ladder and ever so close. Closing in on 250 career wins here at Florida State. The ninth mark of the A very safe trip home. 56 losses and four ties, 26th season at FSU. Out now just five wins shy of Paul Bear Bryant's record. Four behind Joe Paterno. Next up, a Miami Hurricane. Some kind words and a smile off the face of a freshman and Jason Alexander. Bobby Dodd over to join our own John Blunt. So, off to the sideline he goes. 48-24. Our final tonight. Here it goes. We've got to be pleased with Florida State's effort through the first half. Things got a little lackluster, a little sloppy in the second half. Credit as much uh, intensity leaving because you're ahead as crediting Wake Forest to continue to fight and play hard. 48-24, your final tonight for Florida State. From the outset, a dominating win over the Demon Deacon.